Uh, the field house and it's a beautiful night uh, for football it's uh, raining as we speak but uh, forecast says it may clear about 13 degrees um, driving to the uh, field today so a warm night but uh, as the sun uh, drops and, and we're into night now it might uh, get a little cool and that might uh, play a factor but we talked about that all season about how we've been blessed by the great weather um, but this time of year and uh, in Sault Ste. Marie you're you get what you get and you don't get upset and uh, looks like the Knights are going to take that ball, uh, the original kickoff or the first kickoff and uh, we'll bring that to you very shortly. Yeah, you know the Knights are going to be shorthanded tonight. Uh, two of their uh, premier players uh, made a decision to go try out for a soccer team tonight and uh, unfortunately for the rest of their players, uh, right, somebody's going to have to step up and take those reps tonight. Thanks so, uh, you know, uh, look for uh, a heavy run game from uh, the kids that uh, ran hard last week, Jackson, Hunter Jackson, and uh, the uh, Didier boy. Uh, he was uh, outstanding last week, so uh, we're just about to have a kickoff here, so looking forward to an entertaining game today. You can see the onside kick, Coach. We're going deep. And it is deep. They're going to let it bounce. A little risky. Picked up on the five. And run out. Won't get oh, too far, maybe up, seven or eight up, yards on the return. Nice pursuit by the Quarter 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 And Knights will quarter take quarter off. With the tackle. First and ten, uh, St. Mary's Knights. First and ten. Pinned pretty deep there, so they got a long march to go down the field to uh, score the first points. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Coach Nisbet's going to have his kids ready. Uh, they're always well-versed in uh, on uh, what the schematics is going to be. And, you know, both teams have probably studied a lot of film over the course of the, the, the weekend after last week's performances. And... You know, uh, run game, it's, it's got to be run tonight. It's gotta, throwing that ball is uh, going to be a mistake. And you know what? You're going to also walk out for, for uh, fumbles and stuff like that, too. So you got to watch for that tonight. Yeah, the ball possession is going to be key here as uh, Alex Hayes takes the snap and he hands off inside. Nice job. Probably Jackson up the middle, mm -hmm. as you would expect. And we got a big dose of him, uh, as was last, the case, uh, last week the case. And you mentioned uh, ball possession and hanging on to that. And uh, we just saw Alex Hayes last uh, week in the semifinal throwing yeah, the ball well. Out. But uh, obviously the weather is going to dictate a change in that. And obviously missing his two uh, primary receivers, two position players who, like you said, went to uh, try out for soccer uh, team down in Southern Ontario. Absent from the game today. So that will bring number 80 Cole Bailey into the picture as the uh, third running back or wide receiver. Rather, he maybe will see him get some touches. They elect to go to the air. But uh, in the meantime, we'll see, like I said, a lot on the ground. Quick injury uh, update here. It looks like uh, one of the, say, the core players is uh, a little bit of a limp. Could be a knee or an ankle injury there. Uh, slip on the field. Uh, you're going to see a lot of that this evening. But uh, hopefully he can come back. I can't quite get uh, the digits on it over there. But uh, potentially number 20, Scott uh, Hunter Dickinson? Jackson. Uh, or Hunter Dickinson, sorry. All right, so the Knights take the snap. There's Alex Hayes to throw, so we were wrong about that. They're going to Grayson. Wow. Grayson Giordano with a catch, a beautiful pass Alex out to the 50. Alex so. shot from 85. Grayson what Giordano. What a terrific he throw from, uh, wow. Solid -yard ball. You know what, I did not expect to see that, and maybe Corey didn't expect to see that either, but uh, both of those receivers were wide open. They got behind the coverages, and... Uh, Alex Hayes threw a terrific ball there. Yeah. Uh, hats off to him for throwing like that in the rain. He led Giordano 85, I believe, on a nice pass. Uh, First and 10, St. Mary's. Obviously, yes, the offensive coordinators, uh, they uh, have elected to mix things up here and ran ran nice ball on the first uh, down. As they return to the ground, a nice big pop <laughs> on Jackson. Jackson that's going to hurt. Hard. That'll leave a mark. 57. 57. Uh, 57, Gabe Phillips with this stop on the uh, Colts and uh, dropped him back a few after a gain of about two yards. So. Yeah, he got through that hole and then he met the wall there. Gabe Ooh. Phillips, terrific tackle, textbook. He heard it up here in the booth, so that'll bring up second and eight for the uh, St. Mary's Knights again, junior football, four down football, so see a lot of action here coming up and as uh, it's handoff inside, there he's got cuts to the outside. That's Pro Diddy, I believe, and he's going to gain Jackson, about three Jackson, more. No, oh, that was Hunter Jackson again. So, 99. 99. Evan Boville on the stop for the Colts. 22. Gabriel. Looked like that. Uh, he had a little bit of running room there, but he decided to cut it outside and. Uh, yeah, Diddy uh, was out lead blocking for him there, and uh, he put the uh, core defender on his tail. So, uh, if he had stayed right behind the back there, they might have got a couple extra yards there for sure. Regardless, it's uh, third and about uh, four or five yards here, so 
halfway to first down territory. Five for the Knights. As the toss is out to the left. Jackson turns it back inside, flags on the play, looks yeah, close, play close, play maybe Jackson a yard short of the first down. the first down yardage. Yeah, that's either a hold, or the, they were awful close to the his face mask there, so I'm not sure what referee Fitzpatrick saw, but we're going to get the call. Smith, number 71 with the tackle. Yeah, so we'll wait to see. Uh, regardless, I think they're going to be a yard short, but even unnecessary if roughness. unnecessary roughness face, face mask, mask against the Cora Colts, so that'll be a first down automatic. Well and they'll be moving the ball forward. So. Uh, sorry. Now, well you uh, were calling for a lot of run plays, so that surprised you uh, throwing up in the air on second uh, play from scrimmage? No, but I think, uh, you know, kudos to Chris Thompson for uh, making that call and maybe uh, putting Cora on their heels. And, you know, maybe they were seeing that Cora's going to crowd the box tonight. You know, you might see eight, nine men in the box in, uh, on a game like this. And, uh, you know, Coach Thompson must have seen that uh, they were all down in the box and he took a, a chance that uh, Alex Hayes was going to make that throw and uh, he was on the money. And if we, the experts up here in the booth, think it's run, then probably the coaching staff for the uh, Colts probably thought run and probably blitzing and uh, rolling up and uh, obviously surprised somebody as Hayes gets reeled in by number 71, Connell Smith. Connell Smith again. Brought down for a loss of three. Plus through the line, Hayes you know, has uh, to go. With the ball being wet, you're going to, and then playing. Taking that ball from shotgun instead of under center uh, could be impacting them a little bit down the road too. So uh, those snaps are going to have to get to them clean and people are going to have to get uh, the ball off in a hurry. Yeah, second and 14 to play. And like you said, uh, those balls, uh, those center uh, quarterback exchanges are so important and crucial during the year. And now it's uh, wet and ugly. Uh, so we'll have to see if they can reel that in. And Jackson, another Jackson loss of six on the play. Great job yeah. by 31. At the 50, 57. Eight launch for some help. help. Gabe Phillips again. Cam yeah. Williamson gang tackling there. A nice pursuit on uh, Jackson. Nowhere to go. So, Cora Colts are bringing uh, some heavy fire. Yeah, they're going to, uh, you know, Cora really pursued uh, the tackle there terrifically. Uh, gang tackling, and that's something you preach uh, as a defensive coordinator. Everybody rally to the ball. The third and fourth guy in trying to strip it, right? So. So third in a country mile, as uh, Phil Baca would say. Third 21, they need to uh, reach the first end, first down rather. Toss outside. Is it incomplete? I think it dropped to the ground. Goes off so. for the shovel pass. Shovel pass, right? Falls incomplete. And I'd be uh, glad to be leery on that shovel pass because if that was backwards at all or even uh, laterally, uh, that could have been a turnover right there at midfield. So It looked like a Music City Miracle uh, lateral, so who could tell whether it's forward or backwards, but uh, it fell to the, to the ground, and that'll bring up fourth down, so it looks like the Knights will be punting. So we're going to see which kicker is uh, taking the place of Cuglietta because oh, he's not here this evening, so... Uh, I'm not sure, and I don't remember correctly last week if somebody else was punting or not. I know uh, Google is their place kicker, so. I think Primo is back there now. If that's 25, we'll have to check for you. But uh, nice boot either way, so a nice job to get that to the 20. And there's Melchiori looking to return it. He's got a nice job by 42. 42. Marcus Spadafore with the tackle on special teams. You'll hear that name a lot. Spada four on special teams. He's done a nice job this year. I've noticed in the latter stages of the season uh, doing some great, great work on the punt covers and, and kick returns. So I don't know. Uh, the referee's asking him to hold on here, so I didn't see any flags. No. Well, referee uh, Grove is going to give us a signal. Must have been one. Potentially an offside. Could be. Uh, it it kind of looked like it. They were in the neutral zone a little bit, but, uh, you know, it was bang, bang. Oh, mm -hmm. contact on the kicker is the call. So that's a, so I won't bring up a first down, but it'll be fourth and ten. And I think they would probably take it uh, when you limit uh, Melchiori to about a ten-yard uh, return. I think that's good. Uh, I don't know. I'd be uh, if I'm ten more yards up. You can get that ball uh, if he can bang off another kick like that. You well, might trap them a little further. So. You know, I can see your point of view too, though. Like, uh, no, you called it, Scotty. Great call on your part, uh, Coach Bonifero. I think to cancel it. So I see, I see your argument too, though. You get him a ten, you you know, boot it, you get a nice. So the kicker again. That sloppy, sloppy ball is going to play a factor all all game. So uh, 
you know, I'm not sure I uh, kind of agree with this, Scott, because they would have been kicking from the 40-yard line right now. Yeah. And now they're giving Cora the ball at the 34-yard line. So it's a net difference of six yards. Yeah, and I digress. So, I think your call would have been the one that, uh, you know, upon further uh, review, I would have agreed with. Uh, and uh, obviously Coach Bonnie decides he doesn't want to give uh, Melchiori the ball on the run, so he'll have to wait to feel them out of the backfield, which is... To equally tough. Zay Murdoch leading his offense. So yeah, right. Zay Murdoch, first drive for the Cora Colts, taken over from the 34 yard line. So Murdoch hands off to Melchior, and here he comes and heads downfield. Third so down, down the, past the 47. 13 yards, gets first down. Nice gain of 13 on the carry. Yeah, I'm pretty Back confident we're going to see a lot of Peyton Melchior this evening. Uh, He's going to be uh, getting the ball a lot. Uh, you know, he's a league uh, all-star for sure. Uh, sorry, league uh, MVP, I think. Uh, so we're going to see what kind of uh, game plan. You know, I, I said earlier they weren't going to pass, but uh, St. Mary's has shown me that uh, they could. So lots of surprises here today, but uh, you know, the wing tee here is predicated on the run. So other try to establish this early, especially in the wet weather, as. Kachmilo takes it outside. Nice job stringing it out, but makes the corner and gets out. He's still on his feet. Nice little run by Kachmilo. Brought he down by four or five. Nice throw. Cuts back in the inside. Not before getting it's inside to about the third yard line of the Knights. You know, there was a, I was saying, Mary's defender there. The, the, I watched the corner uh, kid. Uh, grab his arm, yeah, and uh, the referee was busy running down the field after the running back, and uh, I don't. Th they kind of got away with one there. I'm pretty confident. So uh, nice pickup on the play. Regardless, 36-yard uh, line is uh, the spot of the next first down, as the Colts uh, start marching. 6-11 to go in the first quarter. This is pretty good action so far. Some nice runs, a couple nice uh, or a nice uh, pass along the air, in the air from the Knights, but. Uh, Ball's down on the deck, and again, there's that problem. 23, the ball carrier, Cohen Manchalenko. Hand off to Cohen Manchalenko. It's bobble. He drops it and lands on it. So yeah, I don't know if that was a tough exchange or a yeah, wet ball, yards. but uh, regardless, they got a... Uh, I'm not sure, because Melchiori was clearing first on that run, and uh, I, I don't know, for me, Scott, it looked like a little bit like he might have got in the road a little bit. Uh, he wasn't cleared through enough, for, and it kind of threw off the timing, so... I would agree. I think that was just a, a little mix-up there, and... These offense will have to get it straight, especially with the weather being as it is. And there's Valkyori through and a nice Valkyori. pop. Valkyori, run. About 10 yards, probably got enough for the first down. We'll see where the spot. We got a hold here, Scott, coming up, looks like. Stubbington. Stubbington on the stop for the Knights, so. And again, a flag in the backfield, probably an offside, but uh, wait and see the call. But holding. Holding. So that'll bring back. Hold in place, so. And that's the thing with a sloppy field, and uh, in the rain, uh, there's always a lot of penalties, a lot of holding, a lot of, uh, you know, unsure footing, uh, all kinds of things that yeah, contribute you know, to a sloppy game. But uh, For sure, you're going to blend a little bit of nerves too, right? Uh, oh, for some of these kids, it's their first uh, city championship, and, uh, you know, it's not like you get to uh, have a second, if you're in grade 10, you, you don't get to have a second one in a couple of years if you're not here tonight, so... Uh, yeah. And the shame is that for some of these great tens, even there, though they're starring in uh, in junior, they'll go up next year, and they'll some of them will uh, you know be seconds and uh, have to earn their spot and get back to uh, the, you know their second year senior in a victory lap before they actually have an impact in the game. Some obviously graduate to grade eleven and uh, s slide right into a starting spot. But uh, well, based on what we're seeing tonight, there's going to two senior teams are going to get a lot of uh, terrific young players there. Absolutely. All right, so second and forever for the Colts after the holding call. Valkyrie gets it. There's another flag in the backfield again. Valkyrie runs with his defender. And that Back looks like on the tackle. He gets across the 40. Back to almost to the original line of scrimmage to the 38-yard line. So. Uh, Cole Rave. I'm afraid Cole I've seen play. something in the interior there, so uh, holding. holding again, Scotty. Holding again. So shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. Not to, uh, and uh, it's tough too, and uh, I don't think that uh, they would have caught yeah, so whoever's being held. I don't think they would have, they would have caught up now. Curious away from the ball a little bit, and sometimes you just gotta let your uh, guy go, and especially when it's running away from you. But uh, these young players are learning as they go, and uh, well, as Phil, Phil Bumbak, as you alluded to earlier, Phil Bumbako says this is third in the country. Right? <laughs> this might be third in uh, the I-75, Scotty. <laughs> this, 
is a, they got a long way to go to get the first down. They're at the, you know, they're at their 53 uh, yard line, and first down is all the way down to the 25 of uh, St. Mary's. So. And they don't depend a lot on their uh, passing game. Uh, Zane Murdoch, nice arm. We saw it last week in the semifinal, but uh, not usually reserved for passing. And here he goes. Pass away. <laughs> so a nice attempt out to Looks like that 86. For 86. Drew Albury. Drew Albury. Tender receiver there. But, uh, sets up third long. Incomplete brings up third and long. And I think that we'll probably see one along the ground by Melchior. And if he busts it, great. And otherwise, we'll probably have a punting situation. Oh, I'll tell you one thing, after all my time with uh, Coach Bonabucci, you, you can always expect the unexpected, so you never know with him, he's a uh, you know, sharp uh, football mind, and uh, you know, he'll have a trick in, or two in there uh, ready to go. So, And of course, uh, as a lot of these teams working on these trick plays, trying to develop something uh, that uh, nobody's seen, you don't want to tilt your, tip your hand off as they go back to Melchiori in the backfield, and are able to stop for a short game, but that'll bring fourth down about the 55-yard line, so at midfield. Yeah, he ran a long way over there, and he got one yard, so, uh, and he's coming up limp. Mount so. with the carry. He tries to get around the end, but he's tackled by a couple of St. Mary's Knights. Looks like he'll make a way to the sidelines, and the uh, St. Mary's... Dominic Cavalier for the Knights. With the Knights tackle. will be back to receive. Dominic Cavalier on the last stop. We heard uh, Dominic Cavalier's uh, quite, name quite a bit there last week, and uh, you know, yeah. first time tonight so far. So expect to hear his name quite a bit. Heck of a player and uh, young up and comer there. Like we mentioned, uh, so many of them uh, getting ready for senior ball next year. Speaking of senior ball, we got the tilt uh, tomorrow. The one we've all been waiting for: St. Mary's versus uh, Cora, and the same uh, matchup, but in the senior division. 7:30 here at the uh, field house. Ball fielded. At Back about the 25 yard line. So, oh, to see on the return, we'll out to about the 30, and that's where the St. Mary's Knights will take over. Piece of you know, on that snap, Scotty, uh, the snap went through the quarter of the uh, punter's hands, hit him in the mask, and he grabbed a hold of it, and he was able to bang off a great punt. So, kudos to him on that play. Four under fire there, so. Concessions are open. So at, at this point, while we wait for the uh, St. Mary's Knights to, uh, yeah, offense to come on the field, I just wanted to shout out to the uh, ladies, both junior and senior, for the St. Mary's Knights basketball uh, teams who are traveling today to Timmins. They ride at their hotel. I want to say hello to my Miss Charlie, number 45, Coach Nate and the girls. Both uh, Best of luck for both those teams, juniors and seniors, this weekend in Timmins. Hope it's uh, nice and warm for you there in Timmins. Well, I was actually, was matter of fact, I was talking to my uh, my old uh, counterpart up in Timmins today, and he said it wasn't too bad up there today. They haven't got any uh, other white stuff, so. Uh. All right, there comes the Knights. Uh, off tackle, left side. Jackson, Looks like Jackson with the carry. With Short gain on the play. Manchalenko, number 23. They'll give him tackle. one. 23 on 23. Manchalenko making the stop for the uh, Colts. Second and nine coming up. Yeah, we're going to see who's going to bust one the first uh, here, Scotty. This is uh, exactly what I expected to happen, uh, you know, in a game like this. Yeah, and they're back and forth trading punches here, and uh, it'll take a break, big play to break it here. And Hayes is back, and the shotgun hits the oh, ball, hits the deck again, and uh, looks like the Cora Colts have that one. Wait to see the signal. Tries to pitch it to Jackson. And again, that's that slippery ball making uh, headaches for everybody. Yeah, yeah Coach so Thompson's got to watch on that call. Uh, falls you know, on it. Those, that ball's slippery. Yeah. Like, uh, JJ Pro Didier. Yeah, the uh, Pro Didier with the recovery for the St. Mary, so they hold on to it, and uh, it'll be so third and 13 third after loss of two there. It's yeah. the war of attrition on, the, you know, which end of the field, who's got what, so. And usually you expect with the uh, the turf field to be uh, well drained, but it uh, looks like a sloppy little mess out there. But uh, Hayes to pass, that ball fell out of his hand. and Hayes looks like he was looking down as he Shot forward with his arm, the ball just seemed to slide and pass intended for no one, but, uh, but that'll bring up fourth down. Pass was batted down. To well, they did the have uh, Cameron Contalanian out there. Uh, he was just he was behind the, the defender, and uh, way, but like I said, the ball's, ball's wet. And and you got to adjust your game plan accordingly. And you know, you might catch somebody with one or two, but and at 14, gonna, go ahead. And if you're going to do that, you got to keep those passes short. You you know, it's long to develop, and uh, the rain is going to make. 
make it really challenging for the receivers to even see the ball in too. So and that's a big ball for a 14, 15 yard year old hand, right? Uh, you know, when it's dry, they can uh, easily get a grip on it, but uh, as soon as the wet is introduced, it uh, makes it for a completely different ball game here. But uh, nice job to return to the 52. Turn to Dickinson with the return. He's brought First down by. 10, Colts. 42 again, Marcus Spadafora. So another special team is tackle. Hunter Jackson also in tackle on the, for the Knights. Yeah, you know, he got it off another dandy. So uh, going to have a field position swap here again. We're on the Cora side of half with about 2.30 to go here. And uh, we'll see what uh, offensive coordinator slash head coach Marco Bonibucci Jr. has ready to go for us here. Great job here. They'll take over from the 53. Looking to march and score the first points of the game. There goes Murdoch. Tosses out to 23. That's Dickinson getting away. Gain of at least seven. Match Lincoln, good hard run. Max Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln rather with the carry. He's tripped up by Marcus Spadafora. Marcus Spadafora with the stop for the Knights. Nice little run that toss out to the, uh, to the backfield here. Maybe able to make a turn the corner and get out to about the 50-yard line. So yeah, you know, a little seven-yard gain there and uh, facing a second and three. And uh, I expect them to stick to the run a little bit more now based on just uh, the... Uh, even if you're an offensive or the core coach, you look at the, the trouble that the same areas uh, offenses have been having holding on to that ball. And, you know, like I said, they don't pass too often, but uh, you keep it on the ground with your bread and butter there. Kachimila is out under wraps. Waiting for support well, for the Knights. And a nice job. He'll get forward progress to about the 55-yard uh, line. Uh, with the carry. Loss on the play. We'll the 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 play there. Yeah, yeah. Plus the flag from the far side on referee Hazelton. Uh, obviously an offside. Just don't know which uh, team yet. So. Yeah. Oh, he's talking to the... Uh, Tyler, Katie, Marcus Spadafora. So St. Mary's was offside lined up. And uh, it's going to be an automatic first down after this. Tyler Cady and uh, back five. Five tackle. Sorry, um, first down, up five. Referee <laughs> 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 quick to can, uh, correct stop. himself up there. Five. Up five yards, so it's going to be a first down for the Cora Colts. Somewhere around the 44-yard line. And that's a tough one for the coaches to take when you just uh, line up foul. It's not an aggressive thing. It's not a you know jumping the gun. It's just line up encroachment into the uh, into the zone, to the neutral zone, and those ones that uh, drive a coach crazy. Yeah, you know it's a little bit different if you're sending a blitz, and you know he missed times the blitz. You can kind of live with that, but uh, definitely when uh, when they line it up offside, it's not great. Murdoch hands off to Melchiori. Melchiori up the gut, nowhere to go. Couple of yards on the carry, but the beautiful stop. Looks like. Well, here gets a couple of yards. 58. Wesley Tate uh, in on the tackle, tackle there, but Wesley Tate for the Knights. Katie. So that'll bring up uh, second. Uh, Second and nine, I'll call it. Yeah, you know what, uh, Coach Katie uh, got that defense rolling this evening in, uh, on the defensive side for St. Mary's. So. Yeah, we mentioned uh, Coach Katie last week, and his son's playing in the game, and number 39, and uh, great coach, and he's, uh, like you said, got them firing on all cylinders here, and great time for them to peak. The cuts back against the great championship Benson game here. So. Up the and was that Nixon with the carry? Is that what I heard? No, that's Manchalenko, I believe. Gabe Buffano. Gabe Buffano, number 41 with the stop for the Knights, former uh, Holy Cross Griffin. So that's a third and about five. Big year. 28 seconds and counting down in your first quarter here. A great first quarter so far. No points on the board, but some excellent ball. Thank you for joining us on SiouxSports.com and True House Radio for our coverage of the Sioux St. Marie City Final and Junior. Murdoch takes the ball, hands it to Melchiori. Melchiori's gone. Has enough for the first down. Melky O with a beautiful left to the outside. 42 spot four takes him down out of bounds, but uh, Marcus found a four at number 40. Enough for the right. first down. First and 10, 5.3 seconds Melchior. remaining in the first quarter. Yeah, we got about five seconds left, so uh, unless they can score here, we're going to flip the dish and go back to the other side, like you uh, always say, Scotty. So. <laughs> Love it. So looking ahead to tomorrow because we got the uh, heavyweight fight there at the uh, senior division. Uh, what are you going to predict tomorrow, Coach? Well, you know what? It's uh, weather will predicate uh, 
how the, how the game's played, obviously. Uh, you know, St. Mary's uh, got a terrific running game. car has got a great running game. And, uh, you know, car does have a couple of elite receivers that they obviously want to throw to. And, uh, you know, quarterback Tucker and, you know. Ben Slager rolls up the middle. They're a little bit uh, more used to throwing the ball in the rain. And, uh, you know, they're a bit more, got, no, a little more grooved and uh, veteran leading. Uh, veteran leaden, sorry. And, uh you know, I expect a, another strong game against the two of them. So they split the they split their series, and anything can happen. Uh, instead of any given Sunday, it'll be every, any given Friday night. And uh, Friday, Friday, night first Friday night lights for sure. Uh, last carry there by yeah, Manchelenko, a couple of yards, maybe four yards on the carry. Well, so, even at goose so eggs. Twist it, and the uh, Colts will be heading north. Looking for pay dirt, looking to get the first points of this game. 12 minutes to go. We're going to start your second quarter in just a minute. Just a reminder that uh, Wendy's Sioux St. Marie and Team Essentials team up with SiouxSports.com every time we play regular season and postseason games to uh, bring you the athlete of the game. And uh, boys in the booth here will be uh, choosing your favorite athlete of the game. And those athletes will be getting a... Um, gift card from Wendy's Sault Ste. Marie and a tea from Team Essentials. So it looks like it's going to be second and four here for the Cora Colts. And uh, after they get the stick set here and uh, referees in okay, proper like place. Second and so. four for the Colts from the St. Mary's 22 yard line. Speaking of uh, Team Essentials, uh, the nice good job getting a shiny old sign from my Patro and the boys from Superior 7. So looks like business is good. Rockin' is my business. Business is good for Vince Palumbo and the gang or Team Essentials. Thanks for your support. There goes Melchiori off to the right. He's brought down quickly. Maybe a gain of two, but uh, well, really try to get Tate the looks like they to stop. Let's see where the spot is, but uh, not enough for the first Wesley down. That would bring third and nice three, let's call it. Sets up. So we're getting into that territory where... Uh, so it looks like a gain of one yard, third and four. Field goal. Rouge time. Go for it on fourth. We'll see what comes up here. Well, they're awful close in this end, and I would think Coach Bernabucci's got to think that he can get three yards in two, in two, within the next two downs. So I would think. Oh, ball hits the deck. Hand it out to Manchelenko. Looks like a design play there. A little fake <laughs> Good Good hard run up the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be the sixth or seventh time down. between these two offenses where the ball is, uh, you know. It is. Learned with disaster and you hit the ground. So that's enough for the first down, and that's about the 15 yard line. So they got to get to the five to move the sticks, and 15 for pay dirt here. So 10.53 to go. Yeah, that could have been uh, disastrous there. That could have been a turnover easily, and uh, the center exchange has got to get crisp. And yeah. And like you say, that's, uh, that's the joy of. Uh, Football in Sault Ste. Marie in October as they give it to Ma uh, Melchior. Melchior runs off to the right. Better hand off, off the tackle. Jordan looks like he's there. A few gains on the play, but uh, not enough for a first Good down. Carry for the oh, five yards. To pick up five, bring up second and five. Second and looks like four or well, five. Keep going back to Melchior. Yeah, so, uh, the Knights. He seems well, to get the uh, yards. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Menchelenko, uh, Melchior show here tonight, the M&Ms. Uh, We'll see what they can do here and see if they can get it in. Coach looks like he's smart. He's running the M&Ms there. And uh, second and five is the call. He's going to hand off inside. Nice to quick dive. And looks like Manchelink goes in for the score. So goes up the middle. Six points for the Colts. A nice lead for the Colts offense. Look like we're going to get the single point. I don't see any, mad, any reason to go for two right now. But uh, we'll see what's in the playbook. Yeah, you know what, uh, St. Mary's had the right call on there. Unfortunately, they just weren't able to wrap him up in the middle and uh, credit to Menchelenko for, you know, powering his way into the end zone, chugging them legs. And that's something you preach when you're teaching the kids to run the ball. Chug, 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 right? Yeah. Keep the, start, the steps uh, small and uh, just keep pushing. So. And nice, to, uh, nice execution by Zane Murdoch uh, continuing on after the handoff and uh, making the guy, a few people bite, myself included, here in the booth, so... Jay Murdoch looks pretty poised back there for a young guy. Coach Miller up and it's good for the extra point. That will bring it to 7 nothing your score. 9.58 to go in the second quarter. Core Colts lead. Pretty impressive drive. You know, they uh, almost went the you know, length of the field there. and 
they establish the run, and it's going to be up to uh, you know Coach uh, Katie, the defensive coordinator for St. Mary's, to come up with uh, you know maybe a blitz or two that's going to try and catch them, and you know got to be sending every one of those kids in to uh, you know gang tackle and strip, and that's a uh, when you get to a game like this, small turnovers could be huge. Yeah. So. What, I, what I'm impressed in there is um, a lot of times when you see Melchiori Boston one or like in senior division where Gazzetti goes for daylight and uh, you know the same areas night seniors have Carter and Trudeau and the likes and uh, even Hunter Jackson with a couple big runs last uh, week that, or last week in the semifinal that was pretty methodical just a couple of quick hitters uh, five yards six yards here and there moving the sticks a couple of penalties couple of sloppy uh, plays but uh, nice job of the uh, Colts to run a little time out the clock and slowly methodically move that ball down the field no big 70 yard gainers there so I'm sure that uh, Coach Byrne Boots she's happy about that and St. Mary's have to answer with something here yeah uh, it'll be uh, who we got back there 26 Alexander Orizetti I can't see the far uh, side Is that the those numbers are so hard to see yeah. on that side of the field uh, due to the dark colors the white's not really lighting them so Reveil uh, returned a few of them in the early part of the season but he was out with an injury so I'm not sure I think that's a single digit but uh, regardless Coach Miller will be back to do the kicking duties for the Colts as he sets up to pound it deep and a nice kick and it's going to go 11 to looks like 11 okay 11 is Cameron Cameron caught the lane and that yep. makes sense as he's run the ball a few times early in, or late in the season so yeah, you know what I've seen uh, they've had the uh, young Botang boy uh, back there yeah, the thing, but with him away at soccer tryouts uh, it's a big uh, you know, having him they got to have somebody else step up and get into that role so and big shoes to fill obviously Botang an uh, all-star in the uh, junior division but uh, uh, that just means the next guy has an opportunity to step up and do his thing so he's tackled sure. by number seven Gavin Avery well, we're going to see what uh, Coach Thompson's got dialed up here on first play call of the second quarter for the St. Mary's Knights. Okay. So Alex Hayes back in a shotgun. So playing a sloppy ball. Hayes decides to keep it. He runs it along the ground. Gains about three or four yards. Oh, sorry. That's a direction snap to Hunter Jackson. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't Hayes under center. Or in the shotgun, rather, but uh, Jackson with a gain of four, second and six. Jackson with the carry for the Knights. It's about four good hard yards, second and six. <laughs> All right. So we get a few uh, roster changes here in the booth, so we'll, we'll try to uh, get that sharp. And uh, again, if you hear your name and it's uh, been pronounced wrong or that we got the wrong number, you please uh, contact, contact well, us here at twosports.com, send us a quick little four. message, and we'll try to correct anything we, uh, we miss along the way. So. Beautiful job by Jackson, busting out over the past midfield, 53. Yeah, you know what, Cor that's a farm deal. there on defense, and uh, he just blew through the line and just kept going. So, uh, terrific run uh, there for the St. Mary's Knights, and uh, be first down on the Cor side of the field. So, uh, great answer so far by the St. Mary's Knights. And was that a jailbreak blitz? Hey, everybody oh, they sent. They sent. They yeah. sent they send a few on that one. So yeah. so the blitz comes and a little stagger in the line. Jackson ever able to slice through and they're exploited. Gain about uh, 20 yards out to the midfield. So nice little run by Jackson as he gets the direct snap again. Oh, a nice job by the Colt defender to slice in. Did, couldn't wrap it up. They run him out of bounds. Jackson both goes to get a couple of hard yards. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Jackson Kinnon and, uh, was over on that side and yeah, uh, looked like he was closing the distance and... You know, everything's wet, so he kind of slithered his way through there, and you know, he's uh, it looked like it was a long one, but uh, on the on the sticks he got two yards. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way to go for a second and eight. A yard or two. It's a second and eight is the call, and they're doing a lot of direct snap to no Hunter Jackson is the one. No, no, sorry, now Alex. Hey, no, that's Contalane and. So they're mixing it up back there in the backfield. Caught Lane enough for the first down. down. So, well, I guess when, uh, about 50 when the play calls, it's hard for the uh, quarterback to mess it up if he's not even in there getting the snap. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Hayes is on the uh, field, but uh, lining up in a receiver set. So uh, a little mixed bag here, like we saw last week with Superior Heights, with Wooten doing the, the duties after Chair Solo taking the most of the snaps this year. 
This is a nice ball to Contalana. Contalana gets to the outside, has to cut it back inside where he's met. Yeah, directs out to to the 40 before by he's number 23. Cohen Manchalenko. Manchalenko's got to be careful yeah, after the celebration. Uh, might get flagged for that little excessive yeah, after the tackle, but a nice pop and a nice job of gang tackling by those Colts. So. Yeah, you know, Turner Dixonton was in there as well, so great ball pursuit. Something uh, Coach Nisbet is stressing, I'm betting. Well, that should be third, isn't it? Wasn't that second? No, that was uh, first and ten, right? Yeah. Okay, so loss on the play. I'm going back a play. Second and 12 here. Ball snap to Hunter Jackson. Hunter Jackson looks outside, but nice job Jackson penetrated by Aiden Wanch. And big. again, Aiden Wanch celebrating. He's, He's had himself a great year on defense. And, uh, you know, there's a, bit run of, there's a bit of a stalemate there on the line, but uh, I, I don't know. It sure looked like the St. Mary's line just got up and uh, stopped, and they were kind of uh, spectating there. Yeah. You know, they got up into their uh, into their sets, and uh, they just Very long for the they, got, they got to keep pursuing the push down the line and not letting Cora break through. And to credit Cora's credit, they uh, just blew the line up there, and they were in the backfield uh, ready to make a tackle. That'll be third and 14 from the 44-yard line, so... St. Mary's Knights with a little bit of work to do here. Alex Hayes. Oh, ball on the ground again. 33 Garcia to carry, but he puts it on and the ground. 47. Logan Lodgeman with the return. Or the recovery, rather. Looks like it'll be Cora Colts ball, but hold on. Is there a flag on the play? Well, they're having a conversation like it looks like it. Uh, referee Fitzpatrick uh, has one down on the ground, so. Kid Phillip comes up with it. Oh, we do have they a flag on the with the recovery, oh. apparently, but uh, that's a tough one, too, uh, giving uh, back his first uh, ball of the game on a, on a exchange. A legal procedure is the call. Legal procedure, black. Enough men on the line scrimmage. Black with enough, not enough men on the line of scrimmage, so that'll be declined, and they'll take over the ball, I think. Declined. So, Colts. So, is that tonight? It's the clock. recovery. over. They'll look to extend a 7 nothing lead. And again, uh, hand off to Garcia. The first time he carried the ball today, so he was a little unsure. And uh, that slippery ball again rears its ugly head and uh, cost the Knights there. You know, still drive. some first-half nerves here in betting, Scott. And, uh, you know, once they get to, you know, get this uh, a few... To get to the second half, those nerves should be going away. And it's about, you know, getting down to the grind and knowing what your uh, your calls are and your reads and... Just uh, doing what you've been doing all year long. Don't change a thing, right? Yeah. And it doesn't look like the uh, rain shows any sign of uh, letting up. Uh, so it will continue to be sloppy. And they're going to have to overcome that. Both teams are. And uh, Cora Colts here with 6.04 to go. And looking to march down the field and build on that 7 nothing spot right now. And off to Melchior. He goes to around to the right. Cuts it back inside. Nice job pursuing well, by the St. Mary's Knights. St. Mary's stops him after a gain of two. He'll probably bring up second. And you know, second. usually the uh, uh, has uh, uh, a lot of success running outside, but it looks like uh, defensive coordinator Katie's made a, a point of making sure that they're not getting outside the tackles. And if he's going to run that far, he's only going to get a few yards. So, uh, of course, had a lot of success running up the middle and into, into the C-gap tonight. And, uh, you know, we're going to see what they got uh, dialed up here and uh, what Co Coach Bernabucci has called. And speed kills, so when they get to the outside, it's going to be hard for them to stop them, but they did a nice job stringing it out as Hunter Jackson runs and carries the pile forward. Beautiful run. To 43. Out the middle, through a crowd. Six, uh, six defenders on his Close back, and Jackson five. able to scamper out past the uh, 45 to the 43, so a nice little move into the pile there. I'm not sure if that was Jackson or Manchalenko. My bad. I'm going 23 on the black, so you are correct. It is Manchalenko. And Marcus Spadafora, Bo Primo. Bo Primo and... Uh, Break the tackle first to 10. Four, 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 eight, four, eight, eight, 43-yard line. Almost like uh, Coach uh, heard me on the headset over there. I told him to run in, inside the line there, and uh, sure enough, there it is. And Melchiori's got an angle out to the oh, sidelines. speed, get to the outside. First, down, first down and then more. A gain of about uh, 22 on the play, so. We'll be Spot four again, running about Spot four with the stop out of bounds. And the ball will be spotted about the 24, so that's where they'll start their next march. 
And again, Cora just doing a nice job chipping away a little bit inside, a little bit outside, some with speed, some with power. And Knights unable on this drive at least to uh, find their footing. So, yeah, this second quarter sure has flew by. We're at four minutes to go here, so uh, the run game obviously eating up a lot of clock. We're not Quite hands off to Matchlenko, but there's flags indicating offside of Cora, so that'll back them up five probably and. Uh, Wait to see from yeah, definite procedure uh, on the core codes there. So referee grab with the call, legal procedure. White, White. first down repeated. Perfect. First down, yeah, fifteen yeah, now against the Colts. That'll back them up five. Repeat first down. And that's uh, maybe a little breathing room for the uh, Knights defenses. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Bonifero wants to uh, see if they can get out of here. Uh, you know, only down one score and see if they can get a turnover and yeah. Yeah. So Murdoch under center, hands off to Manchelenko again. They're having a lot of success, and uh, you know what? If it's a, a run, run. don't fix it. Uh, they keep running. You know that power oh, run up through, yards, uh, but eight yards just the same. Through the over the same place, they're running uh, over the uh, behind the tackle, and it's it's working. So obviously the line's doing their job for the Cora Colts, and uh, yeah. they're getting some distance here. You mentioned Coach Katie, and as a defensive coordinator, as you're telling your guys, cheat outside, make sure you contain, turn it back into pressure. You're giving them the inside, and uh, Manchelenko taking uh, full advantage of that as they give it to Melchiori. Melchiori goes up again. Plus 15, it looks like, before he's tackled. Short gain, so it looks like Manchelenko might be the answer right now and set up the uh, speed game for Melchiori down the road. As Murdoch... Executes this offense. 316 to go and count. Tyler Katie with the tackle. Tyler Katie, number 39 on the stop for the Knights. Murdoch with the run right up the middle. Keeper, I believe, and uh, looking for a couple yards. Got that and then some. Enough to move the sticks. Maybe inside the 10. Might be first and goal. We'll see where the spot. No, it's about 10 and a half, to 11 yard line. So. Better run up the middle. Sets up third and short. Wait. Wait, it's a first down, of course. Yes, first down for the Colts. Colts first down inside or on about the 11-yard line. So I'll tell you, the referees have been pretty lenient this evening. There seems to be a lot of uh, verbal sparring going on and uh, you know a little bit of gamesmanship, as you might want to call it. Uh, they might be cracking down on that one at a key time, and they got to watch and uh, on that doesn't happen. So. Yeah, and it's a little youthful exuberance as uh, little Max Renko runs it down to sign the sign is. Touchdown! No, nope. on the far end of this. Coach, uh, referee Biagini's uh, got his arms in the air. That's close to the end zone. Uh, They're gonna say. They mark it down at the one. Down at the one. So. Referee Maniaco was right to uh, Johnny on the spot there, and that was uh, referee Corelli on the far side. So, from my vantage oh, point, he was definitely Sorry. his arm was down at the one here. So. All right. They're gonna have a little conversation about it, but uh, he was not in the end zone from the vantage point that I had. Okay. Uh, I don't know what uh, referee Corelli saw in that, but uh, you know he's a lot closer to the play. So either way, the uh, referees will confirm. We'll either have a second and goal or a touchdown indication. So seven nothing. Your score two forty nine to go. Yeah, in order so for his uh, elbow to be down on the ground, his knee would have had to been down. So it looks like it's got down on the one. So. And I'm sure you're going to get another dose here of the running game. They won't be passing here. So, so they're calling that first and goal. And we got about two minutes and 49 seconds to go in the half here. So, so they indicated that they're inside the one, which gave them the first down. Now they'll bring first and goal from the one. And uh, you can expect a jumbo here, or a big push at least. What if More quarterback sneak here, I would... Uh Look at that tricky play. Is that by design, Coach? Because he had the quarterback coming up for the boost. Touchdown. And we'll have to go look at that on the replay, but... Uh, uh, that might be just be uh, somebody that spent a lot of time with Coach Bonabucci uh, knowing what uh, his philosophies are when they get down there, so... Uh, either way, it's effective. It uh, resulted in a touchdown, and now they'll look to convert. 
you know, I look to Coach Bonfero trying to uh, rally his troops over there and, uh, you know, get them getting a score here in the uh, before the half closes out will be p really pivotal uh, uh, for them. Yeah, looks like they're going for the extra point. Gotchmina is lining it up. Murdoch to hold. Snap is good. It's down, and it's blocked. Dropped by a block number. Punt. I can't see Spot who it is. Spadafora with the block, so it remains a 13 nothing game, so that might be just the um, momentum. Who's the Tate? Wesley Tate also getting, also getting credit on the There block. are two of them back there, Scotty, for sure. Okay. So, uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, it's it's a nice push. Definitely uh, sliced right through that line, and uh, we're able to get through. And In a sloppy game like this, every point matters, so that might be the difference uh, late in the game, hopefully for the uh, St. Mary's uh, Knights, rather. Uh, and uh, hopefully for the Colts so it doesn't come back to bite them. But uh, nice job by the surge by the Knights. And they'll get the ball back with 242. And they'll have a chance for a drive. And 13 uh, nothing is a manageable score going into the half. But you certainly obviously want to close the gap to one score game. And that gives you some momentum, some uh, something to rally around. Uh, I believe the Colts will get the ball in the second half, though, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like Orzetti... And number 11, Contalane, and back for the juniors. So, Coach Miller to do the kicking duties for the Colts. Yeah, he banged off a couple of good ones uh, to start so far in the in the first two, uh, his first couple. So, yep. you'd kind of expect that. But knowing the coach the way that I know, uh, you know, this could be one of those where he does a little bit of a chip nice. shot over here trying to get a momentum swing. I've seen him do Looks it in like the past. So. Coach Miller will kick off. Conkalane and, and Jackson back. You see those young, the young Knights do a little bit of the jitters, not sure what to do. And put me in, Coach, and they're ready to play. Had a deep boot and an absolute bomb down to the 10. Bobbled. Looks like Conkalane is going to have to pick it up. Oh, nope. That's... That is Contalane, and out past the 20 to about the 23. Contalane bobbles it, but makes something out of nothing and gets clear across the 20. So a nice little return after bobbling the ball inside the 5, but a banger of a boot with uh, Cochimilio at the wheel there. Yeah, he's really getting uh, well, uh, a... So Somebody's uh, going to be getting a terrific kicker for senior. If he's kicking him that far in junior, uh, you know, he's only going to get stronger as he gets older, and uh, he'll be kicking him in the end zone off the kickoff. <laughs> Yeah, and Lagin in with the uh, stop for the Colts, so the uh, Knights have a long way to go, but uh, Alex Hayes uh, driving the bus. This could be a good one. Speaking of driving the bus, big shout out to Randy Parlow looking to do one more bubaloo at the end of this game if the Knights should become victorious. Big papa to all the uh, Knights for years. He was a coach back when I played, back 100 years ago, but... Uh, Nice swing pass out to number 11, Contalane, and picks up two. So it was only, seven, two it was only 75 years ago, Scott. You're not that old. Maybe your brother was 100, so. Uh, it all feels like a blur. And I feel like I'm going to go out there and play for another championship. That would result in a trip in an ambulance, which is kind of cool, but. Uh, I had them. They're not that cool, Scott. <laughs> Mima. Regardless, 220, here it goes, second and eight with the Knights trying to mount a little comeback here late in the, sec in the first half, rather. And nothing doing, Aiden Wants with a stop Aiden in the, the top backfield, so that'll be a loss. Hunter Corey Jackson Holtz. unable to get unhinged here. Looks like a loss of a couple uh, if, I, if I'm Coach Thompson here, Cora is really over pursuing the ball, and they're good. They can catch them, but I think he's really got to change the snap count because Cora seems to be sitting on it, and they're in the backfield before the quarterback can even think about what he's doing. So, you know, you got to catch them on a different cadence, uh, you know, and uh, throw them off their game because uh, Coach Nisbet's got them dialed in tonight, and they're getting right in there. Do we go to the area yet, Coach? Or you? Satisfied at 210. Well, do you want to give Cora their ball on this side of the field? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a quarterback and running back running into each other. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's a little miscommunication with uh, Hayes and his back. I think Jackson again Jackson with the carry. With the carry. Not much of a pickup on that one, so that'll become fourth and. And we might see the punt here with 203. I think you have to punt this one away. You don't want to give them the ball at the 20-yard line. That's pretty easy points for uh, Colts with uh, two minutes to go. They're going to call a timeout here. Yeah, I think uh, they're trying to get the clock to count down, and then uh, Coach Bonifaro is going to call a timeout. Good smarts. 25-second uh, clock, so that'll bring it down to 138, I believe, if they go the distance. 
Fourth and looks like 11 for the Knights. Smart call by uh, Coach Bonifaro, though. That's, uh, you know, don't want to give them any more time than, uh, than they need. So I think he's uh, going to send his punt team out here would be the smart choice because fourth and 10, you don't get it. You're going to give Cora the ball inside their own 30 uh, on the St. Mary's 30. That, uh, that's a tall order to come back from for sure. Yeah. So we'll bring that to you in just a minute here after the timeout. It's 142. I want to thank you for joining us here on SiouxSports.com and Truos Radio. Reminder that tomorrow the senior file final will be uh, featured here on SiouxSports.com between these same St. Mary's Knights and the Cora Colts um, in the senior action from the Fieldhouse here at Spear Heights tomorrow. 7.30 start again. Got the boss uh, doing a little camera uh, reinstall up here <laughs> right now beside us. Uh, it was pretty cozy up here. That's a lot of fl fluffy fun up here tonight. <laughs> uh, lots of fun. So the huddles break, timeout is over, and we return you to the action. Just remember that uh, we'll be back in the second half, but we still at 142. So stay tuned. We're going to get some lots of exciting action here. Maybe a block punt, maybe a big return, maybe a cover deep for the St. Mary's Knights. Well, if I'm St. Mary's, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm. They're going under center here, so I don't know what, uh, what he's got planned. He must have something uh, trying to get a momentum swing, but uh, or maybe oh. uh, take it to the end zone and take a rouge. Maybe the uh, oh, oh, he boots it up high into the sky. That's going to be fielded at the twenty, or sorry, by number twenty at the fifty. So Dickinson with the catch, he's run out of bounds by 42. Dickinson. Wow. Stop there. Stratifora. He threw the Stratifora. ball at the St. Mary's defender there. Uh, that should have been, a, I can't believe Carl Maniaco didn't throw a, a flag on that. He didn't like being thrown out of bounds and bumped into by the St. Mary's defender. And he, uh, you know, he threw the ball at him. So, got to watch. I'm, uh, they're being really lenient here. Uh, typically, you don't see that uh, going on uh, Hopefully there are no senior players watching and thinking they're going to be able to get away with that tomorrow because that will be resulting in a lot of yardage and laundry day for uh, for the senior game tomorrow. But uh, regardless, they're going to let them play, and play they will. 134 to go. Cora is taking the ball from the 44-yard line, looking to score and extend their lead that half. And that's a run right up the middle, a nice little scamper. Enough for a first down and then some. And off to Malkiori, he gets first down. Yeah, the the carry. Oh. down. Cool Inside Ravine. the 35 to the 34. Ravine's Spadafora with the stop for the Knights. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is a key stop here for St. Mary's. They got a buck 27 to go. They really got to make a, a stand here and uh, not let uh, Cora get on the board again. Yeah. A lot of Knights in the box as they give again to Melchiori. Should have been stopped right there. Nice per, uh, penetration. There's a flag on the play. Maybe oh, that ball, the flag on where the that spot is, but uh, we'll wait and see the spot and the infraction. And you know, the more I think about that play uh, before St. Mary's made the decision, I got I got to tell you, my gut it was telling me to take the ball and have them run into the end zone and take the safety and give them the ball way down there. Yeah. Right now, you're you're facing uh, you know them potentially kicking a, a field goal or scoring another touchdown. Easily could have called that. So. So that'll be 10 so penalty against the as, they, as we see that, uh, holding play back 10 on that spot to the 42 yard line, 43 yard line, I think it's going to go to. And that'll make it first and 20 for the Colts. So nice job of the Knights to push them back with a holding call. First and 20. Colts with a long way to go here, but uh, a lot of time to go. 117, here's that end around. 23, Manchalenko, Manchalenko. hard yards up the middle. Goes around the end, cuts back in. Cuts back in. Gets about six, seven yards. You know, we're going to see uh, what the, car what the cardio is like for uh, Manchalenko tonight. He's uh, been on the field. I don't think he's left the field yet. The and, uh, you know, by the third, fourth oh, quarter, you know, young kid locks up lots of oxygen right now, but it could be wearing him down a little bit, so uh, could could be a change in the pivotal part of the game, so. And he's gaining some hard yards too, making some heavy uh, hits on those nights, but he's also taking some lumps, so uh, we'll see how he uh, endures here. Zane Murdoch rolls out, and he's got lots of pressure coming, dumps it off nicely to no screen. Manchalenko again, pounds the right tight defender, but uh, to Manchalenko. only a gain of about six on the play, so he'll That'll still be third, third and seven. 
I'm not sure if that was the design plate on that <laughs> one. <laughs> Looked like a little bit of scrambled eggs there, uh, but he was able to get the ball away, and they got, uh, uh, you know, half the distance of the, including the penalty back, so they're going to have about a third and eight, and uh, it's going to be up to 52 seconds left, and I'm sure they're going to see another little run here. And well, they say if you crack an egg, make an omelet, and they did the best out of that one. A little farmer's... Uh with 49.6 to go. We'll start the clock. It'll tick down. Colt's happy to hand it off to Melchiori. Melchiori runs back inside. Met. We will uh, back to Melchiori. Four. Hope you're up for the uh, first like down, so it's the same time for the coach here. Nope. Uh, you're going to go for it. I think uh, Dominic Cavalier in there in on the tackle. A couple other hosts of... Uh, Heath and uh, Heath Desjardin in on the tackle as well. So uh, fourth, fourth and down, three. fourth and three, and I think you got to go for it at this point. Uh, I would think two but, outside uh, of a field goal. And there's uh, uh, the clock is ticking here, and they're not in any hurry to run this football. I'm a little bit shocked. Coach Bernabucci usually dialed in on this. Always fascinated at the lack of urgency sometimes with uh, some of these teams, unless he runs it in for the. Play. <laughs> Touchdown, it doesn't really matter, but he's going to be brought down about the 10. Well, gets so on the end, drags a few 19 point eight seconds, enough for a two plays, maybe three if uh, if they're rushing. And I believe the Colts still have their two timeouts. Well, I think they just burned one right now. Oh, so perfect. So we're down Bucci to one. electing to yeah, have a conversation four. about this. Uh, definitely, you know, if I'm uh, if I'm St. Mary's, it's like gang tackle. Everybody to the ball. Third, fourth guy in trying to rip that ball out of his hands. Uh, yeah. You know. It's yeah. uh, this is dicey here now. You, you don't want to give Cora another score, uh, at least a major. If you know, if you got him, uh, hold them to a field goal. I think you've been successful uh, on this first half. So, yeah. as we wait for this uh, Cora timeout to break, we I'm going to uh, send a shout out to number 78 Rain Gravel and uh, his grandma Jara Sears. Yara contacted me uh, after working with me last year and said that uh, she didn't think that uh, Rain's name was on the roster and that indeed it wasn't, so I said that I would make a shout out. Uh, Rain obviously playing for the St. Mary's Junior Knights here and uh, we'll hope to hear their, his name uh, a little later in the game. But a uh, big shout out to Yara. Hope you're enjoying your retirement and uh, back to the action. Here we go. There's. Murdoch throwing deep, and he's got Murdoch touchdown. Wow, what a great ball. Owen Manchelenko with the reception. A beautiful ball by Scott Murdoch as he rolls up. That was, uh, you know, the rain stopped here a little bit. We're just getting little sprinkles of it now. It's not as hard. And Coach Bernard Bucci elected to go to the air, sold the run, and uh, they're up three scores. And you know what, that's that uh, same area Knights rolling out of the board, you know, they haven't, haven't defended the uh, pass most of the game, so, you know what, it uh, lulled them to sleep and then throw it over the top, and Mench like was wide open for the snare, so. But you know what, uh, he, the defender, St. Mary's defender was there, he just wasn't back far enough, and uh, they threw that right to the back corner pylon, and it was a touchdown, so. Uh, nice job by Murdoch to launch that, and Mench Lenko with the reception and the touchdown, as Cochmelio lines up for the extra point. Say a little prayer. He's got the hands extended. Snaps down. And Pick is up and good. Good for another point. That'll bring the total to 20 to nothing. I'm still a little bit confused why you have your star running back on kickoff on punt uh, on uh, extra point. Uh, you know, they got about 60 kids over there. Uh, it's hard, I find it hard to believe you can't find one other uh, young fellow to get in there and uh, play. So, But that's why I'm up here in the booth. Uh, Making all the millions with you, Scotty, and uh, they're down there uh, making all the millions on the field. So, a uh, million dollar shootout today. It's a, it's going to be a great game, a great second half coming up. We're glad you could join us on SuSports.com. Right now, I want to thank our sponsors here on Superior Catholic District School Board: Northern Sports Excellence, Freeze Frame Photos by Bob Davies, Wendy's Sault Ste. Marie Team Essentials, Maximus Rose Elite Eight Basketball Academy, and True House Sports Radio. And if you want your uh, business featured here on SueSports.com. Contact, contact us at SueSports at gmail.com and we'll put you in touch with the people who can get your name and your business brought to millions or at least dozens and Alexander Arzetti here on SueSports.com. So thank you for joining us. Reminder again that there's a senior game tomorrow, 7.30 between these Colts and these Knights. It'll be as exciting or more 
as this one is 20 to nothing going into the half. So Knights might uh, look for a big old run back here. Orozetti, Contalainen back, caught on the run, bounced up. Favorable bounce for Contalainen. He's going to look for the corner. He might be able to get it. He gets outside. There's a flag oh. on the play, and unfortunately, that will go against us. Contalainen changes nice. his mind a couple times. Oh. Gets some good yardage out to the 40. Three but seconds, flag time on for one more play. 25. And we'll wait and see. Usually, that's a block. Yeah, against the, Mary, uh, I think. Looked like one of the, the core defenders got pushed from behind and uh, wasn't able to uh, see the numbers there and got caught for it. And a returner is able to get to the corner and sprung for a few yards. It's usually a, an infraction going against the returning team, and that's the case here. They had one of the uh, <laughs> one of the coaches over there look like uh, Coach DeMichael. Uh, he was clapping pretty hard over there. Like uh, it looked like the uh, Energizer Bunny. And he, he, he was pretty enjoying that penalty, I guess, because it's going to push them back. So, Yeah, and that brings up the first down uh, back in St. Mary's territory with three seconds to go. Would you uh, take a knee and take it into the, uh, limp it into the uh, dressing room, or do you go for a Hail Mary? I thought that's the roughest. You know, uh, nothing would surprise me with uh, Coach Bonifero. Uh, you know, if you can, uh, if you got one of those surprise plays you've been saving up all year, this is the time to uh, throw it in there. But... Uh, you know, I'm sure that if uh, I'm Coach Nisbet, uh, the defensive coordinator, uh, I'm telling every, you know, keeping my two safeties high up in the top side, you're playing cover two, and, uh, you know, not let anybody run past you, so. Give him the under, give him a short completion, but uh, looks like a interesting formation there with a guy in all fours. Uh, oh, they're going to run the all, all right. All right. And it's going to be the half for us, Scotty. Thanks That's it. Uh, at the half, it's 20 the for Cora Colts, 0 for the St. Mary's College Knights. We are going to take a 10-minute break. We'll be back with the second half on SuSports.com. We'll see you then.
Good evening, folks, and welcome back to SuSports.com. We're bringing you the uh, second half of this uh, semi, or, sorry, junior final in the Sault Ste. Marie High School football loop between the Cora Colts, who are up 20 to nothing on the St. Mary's College Knights. So, great entertaining first half, coach, and uh, more to come in the second here. Yeah, you know, um, nerves should be gone now. First half, uh, you know, you got right, a little bit of credit nice to, to uh, nerves. And uh, now that they've had their, uh, like, you know, uh, first half out of their belt and they've had a conversation in the, the locker coach. room. And, you know, it's uh, it's up to um, the coaches to inspire their kids and uh, see what's going to go on here. Coach Bonifero is electing to uh, give a little razzle-dazzle here to start the game, uh, see if they can get the ball right away. So... Nice boot up by. He did not blow them in yet, so it's a re go. Uh, and there's those nerves again. Giordano looking to put the perfect, perfect uh, ball onside kick. Now the uh, clock operator here, <laughs> he even jumped the gun too. So <laughs> so the ball not wrestled in, so they'll replay that uh, kick. No penalty on the play. Uh, they'll just reset here, and uh, Grayson Giordano will try again with the onside kick. So they're going to probably reload that uh, clock to 12 minutes. Or, or I'm, not sure sign who, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure who's running the clock this evening, but uh, they have to restart that clock. All right. So, so like I said, 20 to nothing, your score. The core Colts leading the St. Mary's Knights looking to retain or regain the, uh, the possession. Ball has been blown in now, and Giordano, like I said, will make the onside attempt. Kicks it a little too far. Caught after about 15 yards by number 11, who is going to return it. He's got some blocking out front. He's got one guy to beat. He turns it back inside. Now it's loose. Number 11 carries it inside the 40, and that's about where he will stop. Gavin Grisdale with a nice return there. I think if he kept going to the outside, he might have had the corner. Yeah, and, uh, I really think he had it beat, back. Scott. Yeah. Stubbington with the tackle. One tackler to beat, but Stubbington makes the stop at the 40, and that's where Cora will take over the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder, there is I think no some of these uh, <laughs> kids oh, are watching a little bit too much of these pros. Lots of dancing and prancing going on there. So, uh. Yeah, you see a little ex youthful excitement, exuberance. Uh, uh, as you can imagine, in the championship game, playing for all the marbles in front of a big fan and a great, uh, great fan base here tonight. Great uh, Stands are almost packed, lots of umbrellas, lots of people braving the rain, and uh, great to see the people supporting. Thanks to you uh, watching at home as well on SueSports.com. Don't forget our senior game tomorrow between the Colts and the Knights. Big heavyweight tilt in the senior division. So first, second half here coming up with the Colts taking over. Murdoch hands off on the end around to number 34. Oh. 34 being Scott Emilio. He almost came to a stop before the St. Mary's defender and let him wrap him up and uh, right, and stop. Had he ran a little bit more, I'm sure he could have got at least two or three more yards. But he put the brakes on himself and made it really easy for the St. Mary's defender there to wrap him up. Accepted the bear hug. Uh, gain of five on the play. Second and five from the 36-yard line. So inside St. Mary's territory. Colts looking to put up a early some early points here and salt this one away but uh number four oh <laughs> they're all well, under thrown tipped in the air well wow. defended by buffano i believe he uh he got his hand on that had he there was not a lot of people in front of him saying he's going to make it to the end zone but he definitely would have had the ball for them and st mary's would have been in great field position on that one so so bounces off the hands of Stubbington. Uh, like I say, sometimes as a defensive player, you're surprised to see that ball and surprise. You know, it. Uh, well, they're on, de they're on defense for a reason. No, they're <laughs> they're uh, really good hands. They'd be on offense. So wait, coach, I was a defensive player. Exactly my point. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so we got third down and five after the incomplete pass, and Murdoch hands off inside. Nice little action. Twenty-three. Rumbling forward, Manchelenko with a nice 20 run. Gain of about uh, 21 on the play, and that's enough for a fourth down. No, gain of sec 16 on the play, but uh, inside the 20. So they're in red zone territory. It's coming to Sonic, and I think Primo was in there also. Brian Sonic and uh, First and Primo in the stop for the Knights. Looked like the uh, Knights defender pushed him forward into uh, extra yards for 
Yeah, that's the thing when you're gang tackling like that, you're supposed to be pulling backwards, not uh, shoving forward. <laughs> the GPS not working and uh, that young fella's drivetrain, but uh, either way, first and 10 from the 21, so just outside the red zone. Ball's on the ground. Looks like 34 is able to recover it. Wow, another fortunate AJ bounce for uh, uh, the core oh, code, so oh. that could have been disastrous and for them. That, and that would have been just what the uh, St. Mary's Knights needed was uh, on the scramble and ball hit the like deck. Uh, well, run down, second, but, uh, second and 11, loss of one on the play. That would have been the uh, Dr. Hook uh, TSN turning point here. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, so the Colts continue and the Knights continue to Attempt to stop this powerful Colts offense led by Zane Murdoch here, number four. Hands off to Melchiori, goes off tackle. Able to gain some hard yards, still running. And four guys tackling. Okay, it to take nice down Melchiori inside, inside the 10 to the, the nine yard line flag. Yeah, the referee grabbed through that uh, flag, so that's got to be in the holding vicinity because he's calling a St. Mary's. Uh, Yep. Defender, so it was nowhere near the first down uh, marker second at that point. Needed. So uh, it's going to go back ten. So it's going to be uh, so Cora's going to be uh, second and twenty-two, I believe, uh, for this one. So, so hate when your offense moves in the wrong direction, so and second uh, and twenty-two, they'll need a bunch to uh, get to the next first down. But with an offense like the uh, Cora Colts, and they've been running pretty well today, minus a few fumbles and. Balls hitting the ground. Uh, well, this is where the uh, the St. Mary's Knights need to capitalize, Scott. Uh, they got them pushed back here, and uh, you know a couple of quick stops, and uh, it's it's pretty far for a field goal from this area. But if they can contain them and get the ball back, I'm sure that's uh, exactly what uh, Coach Bonifero would like to see happen. So he's got to kind of count on his leaders inside that interior defensive line to make a play. You could even allow a three, four yard uh, run and uh, still come back to fight for, uh, you know. Oh, the ball's on the ground again. Looks like the St. Mary's Knights are going to take it over. 84. 94. 94. 94. He's the jarred him with the recovery. And uh, we said a couple plays ago that was what the defense needed to do is step up and give their op offense a chance. And uh, they have j done just that. And Alex Hayes will march on and uh, try to lead his troops down the field. Went down 20 to nothing, so. Well, that's a, nice it could break. be a pivotal part here for in the second half. We can call it the uh, Sioux Sports turning point uh, for at least this this play. We'll see if they can uh, make anything develop out of that. I'm sure Coach Thompson's uh, been thinking hard over the, over oh, the intermission and the uh, he's uh, uh, trying to come up with some of the big 31. plays that he had last week. And the uh, second play from scrimmage at the first half, uh, Alex Hayes went to the air. He's in shotgun now. Let's see if they decide to throw the ball. He does throw it to Contalanen in the backfield. He's able to get loose. He's got his first down and then some. A little high tackle there as Contalanen is brought down by 20. Yeah, oh, and the the, uh, face mask. I think it's going to be about 15 more. He's tackled out of, out of bounds. And and a nice momentum swing play. for the same Mary's Knights as they'll... Uh, well, we're going to call it a horse collar, so yeah. uh, him and the referee, uh, Manny Ako, and, uh, you know, they were having a discussion there, and uh, referee Roberts, and uh, I think they, they're determined it was the right call. From our vantage point, definitely it looked like a penalty, so. Yeah. And again, the referees are always right, and uh, no point in challenging them anyway, because uh, they get the ultimate say, right? So horse collar goes against White, now march it forward. Gain of 13 on the play, tack on another 15, makes it 20, 28 on the net gain. And they're into uh, Cora Colts territory. So just what the, the doctor ordered for the St. Mary's Knights as uh, they try to get themselves in a game. And uh, you don't get uh, 20 points on one play, so it's a matter of just marching down the field. And so that'll putting your first uh, points on the board. The the foul, it'll be first and 10 St. Mary's Knights. And that's what Hayes and company will elect to do here. So fifth ball at the 51. Uh, it's a pivotal point here, and uh, hopefully St. Mary's, uh, for the sake of the fans here, can make this a game. You know, they worked hard all year to get to this point, and, uh, you know, they're a little bit uh, short staff from uh, kids making decisions on soccer tryouts, and uh, now uh, these guys got to step up, and uh, it's their time to uh, shine. So. Well, referee talking to the sidelines. They wanted a number. It sounded like on the chorus sideline. That was uh, they always the big chant when I was over there. Hayes 
Hands off, but met in the backfield by Manchalenko. So Manchalenko pulled the his ankle and his calf. We do have an injury. Time out. Might have brought the, attack, the carrier down on his leg, but uh, Manchalenko, a nice stop. Getting into the backfield there and chopping him for a loss of about three or four on the play. Yeah, St. Mary's line's got to really uh, focus in on their gap control, and, uh, you know, they're letting those uh, St. Mary's linebackers run into the line. So, you know, I'm not sure where play coach Thompson if he was pulling a guard uh, on that specific play but he's they were getting into the backfield with relative ease and it's you know it's making it really challenging on the running backs to get any momentum going so so we mentioned earlier about the you know on the fitness for uh, Manchalenko it looks like he got rolled up there and we'll see what happens he grabbed his calf uh, shortly after making the tackle so hopefully he'll be all right the Colts will obviously need him he's been a big part on both sides of the ball 23 yeah, he's, made numerous, he's made numerous tackles and he's been a workhorse running. Great giving it back, so nice pursuit by the Colts, number two, Max Fuselli, Aiden Wanch also in on the grab, Hunter Jackson unable to pick up, but maybe one, two yards there, so that'll face them with a third and 12 situation, and this become four down territory here at this point, uh, inside the core Colts line, I think you got to score some points, uh, maybe you punt it away, there's lots of game left, but uh, decision time for the coach here. Yeah. Chris Thompson's got to dial something up here and uh, catch the AmeriCorps off guard. Back in the shotgun, looking to throw. There's that screen pass again, and it's down on the ground. We'll call that incomplete. Pass I think it was complete. a forward pass intended for Contalina, maybe. Yeah, you know what? I mentioned in the first half that Cora seems to be uh, right on top of the snaps, and, you know, I thought maybe That's Coach Thompson pass, might right, address right, that right. at the half with his troops and, you know, changing the cadence and... You know, trying to catch them and maybe a freeze call, but uh, maybe my uh, mic is not making it all the way over to their, their sideline. But I think he could really catch them with a freeze call, and because uh, Cora is over pursuing like crazy, and uh, if they catch them going in the wrong way, uh, could definitely benefit them. Yeah. And that play is sort of surprised to see that they're running that screen pass over there. Uh, you think they try to get vertical, especially with a third and thirteen uh, on the on the deck there as number 25 primo a nice punt spins him deep but a uh, big run back there's a flag on the play yeah that looks a uh, block in the back okay, kind okay, of variety so uh, 35 we do have a flag on the play I'm, I'm, i'd be willing to bet the farm that there's definitely a block in the back or a hold so so looks like <laughs> the colts will regain possession and it looks like it, uh, the, the penalty should be on uh, number eight, Aiden Wanch. He's having quite the discussion with referee Corelli. And referee Corelli is explaining to him what he did wrong. So. First down, back there. That's a behind. So a against blocking Cole, behind. Blocking behind against back Cora. Backing him up. But it will be so first a long down. way to go. And uh, this is where your St. Mary's defense needs another turnover. And let's hope. They could definitely benefit one for sure. And uh, now that the ball's on uh, the other end of the field, you know, if they can uh, get a stop and uh, prevent Cora from kicking the ball too far, uh, could be, you know, a point in the game where they're able to get on the board and build some momentum. Yeah. 6.50 to go. You're watching a great game here on SueSports.com. This junior final between the St. Mary's Knights and the Cora Colts. Colts leading 20 to nothing at this point as they break the huddle and uh, Zane Murdoch leads out. 
quarterback for the Colts, having himself a nice little game, dishing and de delivering the ball to his running backs. This one outside. Nice little gain on the play, probably a gain of, do they have enough for a first down? We'll see. Run by Cam Williamson. Cam Williamson with yeah, the looks like first sticks here, so. So Cam Williamson, 31. Uh, they've been doing a lot of Melchiori and uh, Manchelenko, like but uh, with Manchelenko out, uh, 31, Cam Williamson get his chance to run the ball, and he does a nice job, and it'll be first down. Ball's at the 32-yard line, we'll call it. And again, these Colts uh, offensive line, they deserve a lot of credit. They're uh, pushing uh, the Knights backwards and uh, setting up some nice running room for the... And then, of course, speed kills. So nice job by Kochmila. Get outside. Picks up about six or seven before being brought down by Primo, number 25. Yeah, they were over there on the uh, boundary side of the football field. And <laughs> he ran a long way to get seven yards. Uh, six yards. If I'm the running back, i got to ask my coach, hey, can't we do a little more north-south? Uh, I'm getting tired here, coach. Oh, Primo at the top of the Knights. And they never called my number to run the ball, so didn't get a vote. Second and four on the play. So Colts content to march it. Four or five at a time. Yeah, you know what? Uh, five and five is ten, and that's a first down. So Yeah. And uh, they're content to run down the clock. And there he goes at uh, offside. Maybe a blitz, maybe a... Uh, that was a definite call, freeze call uh, yeah. by Coach Bernabucci, and it's the exact call that I said the St. Mary should be using. Uh, because he could catch people ready to jump off, and uh, it worked, and that's going to be five uh, free ones here. And you know what? That's a coaching thing, and obviously the coaches must have gone through in practice and say, listen, anytime it's inside five yards, second and five, third and five, or less. Wow. So somebody must have moved on the uh, corner side because uh, I did not see that, so they called the penalty uh, 56. Uh, and that'll back them up. Marcus Richards uh, looks like he enticed the St. Mary's defender from jumping into the neutral zone and uh, it's going to back them up. He'll bring up a second and nine, so uh, unusual call there, but uh, obviously the offensive lineman uh, deemed to have uh, drawn offside. So second and nine for Graham. Well, it looks uh, referee Fitzpatrick's uh, getting uh, going to have a sore arm. They may have to get him some 8-5-3-5. He's uh, throwing enough flags tonight uh, uh, for everybody, uh, you know. Right, have to put uh, an ice pack on. He's right in the center of everything, so procedure against White, and that's another penalty. So that's uh, 10 free yards for the St. Mary's Knights uh, that they've uh, gained on defense, so. Yeah, St. Mary's getting all the uh, privileges uh, that they could ask for and all the, all the favors that they would want, uh, and they better have to better capitalize on these ones because uh, you know, Cora is uh, setting the table for them. Yeah, the rain has stopped here, so uh, I don't think Cora is afraid to throw in the air anymore. So. All right, so it looks like uh, there's uh, 31 going for a scamper. He's got the corner. He's got pulled down at the sidelines, but not before a big game. He's Williamson with the carry. Game. We'll see where the spot. Does he have enough for a first down? It appears as though. Oh, I'm not sure that uh, I can see even over there that far. Uh, Referee Corelli is spotted far. near the first here, but we'll see. He might be right at it. Yeah. Well, it's time for the measurement, folks. No penalties on the play for a nice break. Let's see what comes next. Huh? Ball's rolled in. They haven't, they've ruled third and in inches here. So we'll see if St. Mary's got the big package rolling forward and see what they can get the job done here. All right. So looks like they might have stopped it. As soon as he hits the line of scrimmage, not much of a surge forward there for the Colts. One other in there. No, might but, uh, bring up fourth and in inches still. Well, I'm sure that you'll see uh, Coach Bernabucci call something here. Uh, he seems pretty content to leave his offense on the field with needing a yard. So, well, so to, uh, you know, this is right in the, the neighborhood of his freeze game. So he could try and freeze them here and see if he can get them to jump. Uh, he's walking down the field. He's way out of his coach's block over there. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's getting away with it. Uh, you can see the same areas. Coach is telling them to stay home and 
Wow. Looks like there's enough to pull forward. You know what? The St. Mary's defender was in the backfield and he and stopped him. But, uh, nice, but a second effort by the Colts gets second him the first effort down. by the uh, quarterback there and he was able to get first down. He's coming out there a little gingerly, but uh, definite first down. And uh, they want to have a discussion about this, it looks like, from the referee standpoint. It hurts less when you get the first down. Though. Murdoch a little worn out after the, uh, the lick, licking he just took. But uh, if it's going to move the sticks, as it appears they have. But the uh, referees will chat this one up. and uh, uh, Referee Hazleton must have seen something that he wants to have a discussion about. Uh, I didn't see any of the first from, line. From our vantage point, uh, there was an early stop, but I don't know that the pile stopped. So he's going to come up with uh, what he thinks uh, is correct. So. Uh, on the brown and yellow side, it's not going to be a fair, uh, favorite call. Yeah, but so it's that first and ten for the Colts. So nothing is going to be reversed, and uh, first and ten for the Colts. So nice uh, little push there by the St. Mary's Knights, but uh, an equal and better push for the Colts to get that uh, pile moving forward and fumbling forward for the first down from the 45. There goes 31 again. He turns it back inside, and he gets some easy yards. Out for another tough first down. Good run by Williamson on the play. from a 12-yard to the first down. You know what? Those plays that weren't working to the outside uh, earlier are now working for the Cora Colts, and uh, it's going to be up to uh, defense coordinator Katie to make it make a change. And uh, I think he's got to start sending some blitzes or sending something. He's got to have a momentum change here. They're down uh, 20 to nothing. That's three scores. We got three minutes to go, and then uh, we're going to be in the fourth in the fourth quarter. And uh, they can't allow Cora to score here. They definitely need the ball back. And Cora happy just to move their clock. And Oh boy, here it goes. Melchiori shot out of a cannon. Could go all the way. Nobody's going to catch him in for this uh, touchdown. Six more for the Colts. That'll be 26 nothing. So I don't know what wedge is driven between those, but uh, Adeline, with that kind of speed, you're not going to catch Melchiori. And he takes it in for the scamper and the score. 26 to nothing with 244 to go in the third. Yeah, it was like he was uh, sl uh, slingshotted <laughs> out of a cannon there. He just found a hole and, uh, you know, it reminded me a little bit of uh, Sweet Lou's dad uh, back in the day, back in the boarding days when Lou played with my uh, younger brother Keith and, uh, you know, Lou was a terrific tailback, went on to have a great career at Ferris State and uh, he sure reminded me of Lou there. Like, uh, terrific run and uh, Cora is up big here, so... Uh, you know, tall task for St. Mary's. Not saying it's not doable, but uh, they really got to, you know, gain some momentum. So almost 18 minutes to play, 26 nothing. It looks like they're going to try the extra point to make it 27. No, they're lined up for the two, which is, makes sense to go up four completed scores or converted scores. Yeah, what's the theme there? Analytics says do yeah. this. Nice handoff off inside. Uh, St. Mary's stops with a nice job by Tate, and Tate have himself a pretty good game so good. Uh, inside, but... Uh, Two-point conversion is no good. That'll lock it in at 26 nothing. St. Mary's will West get the ball team. back. Tackle. Well, what do you say, Scotty? It's, uh, you know, clock's ticking down here, and uh, St. Mary's definitely needs to build some momentum and get... They definitely need a score on this drive. I'll, I'll call it like it is. And, uh, something from the you know, they need to get on the board here. They, can't, yeah. they cannot not get on the board or... Absolutely. This is where uh, Tony Bonifero will uh, loosen up his playbook a little bit. Maybe look to air it out that first, second play from scrimmage again. Over the middle, threw a long bomb to Giordano. Maybe he has to tackle it to the air or, or attack the air, rather, or come up with something, a little misdirection, a little bit, uh, a little bit of trickery. But uh, they definitely need to score on this uh, drive in order to have a chance to uh, rebound in this uh, fourth quarter. Yeah, you know what? Uh, they can open their playbook up to passing now. It's not raining, so uh, I would, uh, you know, yeah. Coach Thompson's got to blend a couple of little things in here. and They're obviously missing Botang tonight. He's a pivotal part of their offense, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, not having him, it's really tough on these guys, so. Yeah, I'm putting new guys in uh, new positions, and uh, obviously that's uh, showing as they try the onside kick. Nice job by the same area oh, defender to haul it in, but... Uh, no good. A nice, nice. Uh, certainly weren't expecting that from the Colts, but uh, you never expect not to expect. Well, I expect called it earlier. It just happened a little bit later than what I expected. I expected him to do it in the in the first half to keep the momentum there. And uh, you know, hats off to the uh, St. Mary's uh, front line uh, player, and he uh, got the ball. And now St. Mary's got the ball at uh, their own 53 here. So 
great field position. And uh, they just got to get back to running the ball like they were running in the last week. Obviously, they were playing a different team, but they were really successful with their runs. They had good runs, solid runs, off tackle, between the, the tackles, you know. And uh, they got to beat these uh, the defenders of the Cork Colts. Yeah, and I think Hunter Jackson was the uh, MVP of the, or the player of the game last week, and he had lots of big lanes to run through, so hopefully they'll do that again. There's a little bit of a duck that's going to be picked off. And... Got down Dickinson's by number 11, but the pick is made Dickinson's by number 20, number Turner 20. Dickinson. Turner Dickinson. So again, there, that sloppy ball there, that was a ball that uh, is usually on a rope. Uh, that turn, uh, flew out of uh, Hayes' hands and uh, directly into the hands of Dickinson. So Yeah, at that age, you know, uh, you know, I got a pretty big mitt, so I'm fortunate enough. But uh, when they're at that age, uh, you know, it's hard to grab that ball and, uh, you know, throwing it up. And I'm, I'm not sure that that's the play call that, Coach Thompson would have did, but uh, you know it didn't didn't work out. And you know that Hunter Dickinson uh, for Cora is a, a ball hawk, and uh, his older brother was the same when I was coaching them. So you know, terrific play by his part, but the ball was definitely uh, underthrown. So and who's his papa? No, his uh, older brother. Older brother. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so the Colts have it on their forty. Expect a little, oh, ball's hitting the deck. Maybe St. Mary's can recover and get a little momentum back. How many chances is Colts going to give him? Well, it looks like the Colts fell on it and they'll retain possession. Yeah, Zane Murdoch Zay Zay was able to fall carry. on his own uh, fumble there. So Zane Murdoch had himself he a decent final. game uh, doing his thing. Right at the, the final with the stop. Tackle. And St. Mary's nice defense will have to hold here as Murdoch tosses to Melchiori. You got the corner. He turns it back inside. And met by a to go around the trio of Knights defenders. Here, he gets you know what? We thought, uh, we thought Menchelenko oh, really had a little bit of uh, a calf injury. And uh, well, I still back, haven't back, seen him back yet. Five, so, uh, tackle. I don't know. Maybe he might be finished for the game. I haven't seen him on the sidelines very much. He could be in the back row. There's a wall of white over there. There's... I know Cora's got about 60 players on their roster based on our sheet here. And, uh, you know, it's hard to see. Plus, they got about a dozen coaches. So, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Lots of yellow and brown. And they're watching their quarterback, Murdoch, handing off to Dickinson again. Dickinson met in the backfield, and that might be close to the line of scrimmage, but it might be a loss. Fourth, so right? fourth brings up the punting team, I would imagine, for the Colts. As we get some personnel with the running tackle. out onto the field. Heath the Jardin with the stop for the Knights. And a nice job of St. Mary's defense to hold. So he they're, they're giving their offense every chance to uh, stay in this game. And uh, they're going to have to need, like they're gonna need a big one here. With uh, spot four of back for the Knights. Looks yeah, like you know what? I'm, uh, back to I don't know that the St. Mary's personnel too well. But uh, when you got athletes like Hunter Jackson and a couple other ones there. You want to maybe potentially get them uh, some extra catches here or something, but uh. high snap, but a beautiful kick, and Spad Four is back to receive it. He's looking upfield, and he's met at the line. He is hit hard, right at the 36. Beautiful, knocked backwards to the 33 before progress. will have him out to the 36. Spad Four up on his feet. Beautiful lick. I didn't get the tackler there, but a nice pound and wrap there. So. Nice job by the Cora Colts to punt the ball away and get downfield and cover that. Yeah, we're looking here on the defense, and uh, I still don't see Manchelenko because uh, he was uh, definitely one of my front runners for the player of the game. Uh, oh, there he is. Is he out? Yeah, huh? he's in the set and the uh, linebacker. Oh, Sam, there you go. Sam okay, position. maybe they're not going to run him both ways, but, yeah. you know, he's uh, definitely one of the front runners for athlete of the game right now. Oh, he's... Uh, he carried them as much as Mel Curry's been uh, got the points there. Uh, he's he was a big part of the integral yeah. part. He gained those hard yards when uh, Mel Curry was uh, wasn't able to get uncorked there. So now they got a house. Not to mention going both ways too, right? Yeah. So yeah. pivotal uh, tackler for them and uh, at the linebacker position. Absolutely, uh, Pro Didier on the carry there. The carry. That's this will be the last he's tackled by Braganka. Play of the third quarter as. Braganka makes the oh, stop for the Colts. Here. Zero gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. So, St. Mary's Colts uh, in a desperation move here. And 
As the third quarter winds down, they're going to need to force points off, and there's that screen pass again. It's completed this time, and it looks like they're going to gain about four yards on the play. Looks like out nice past the 40. the 40 before being run out of bounds or tackled. Yeah, we're, uh, that's, uh, we're going to have, uh, are they going to do the change of field right now, or are they going to wait uh, maybe one more play? I didn't see any flag on the play, so I expect they might move. The, but, uh, yep. The uh, referee here is picking up the chains and they're going to move it. And uh, Q Scotty, and what are we doing right now? Oh, we're going to flip the table here. And <laughs> uh, now they're playing with me. All right, so I'm making up stuff as we go, flipping the table. No. I had you flipping the, the dish. Here, I had you flipping the dish. Eh? <laughs> flipping the dish. There. <laughs> the satellite dish, I guess. Uh -huh. Anyway, having lots of fun up here. Glad you join us on SueSports.com. As much fun as this has been tomorrow. Come on out for the heavyweight tilt. St. Mary's versus Cora. Five bucks to get in. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Third and four is the call here. So St. Mary's Knights hoping to march and uh, score early here in this fourth quarter. They need four scores of the big variety as they... I'm not sure why the they chains? just didn't have the kids move, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, the cue to music, Three Blind Mice here. Uh, uh, did, did lefty either that or the Three Stooges, one of the two. Uh, lefty Lutz. Just kidding. I have a coach, a couple of those kids, and, uh, you know, great for them to come out and volunteer. Uh, they got the cheap seats, and they got paid for it tonight. So, uh, so making enough to... Uh, by the old Baconator at Wendy's, Suzanne Marie. I'll tell There's you one thing, though. Uh, the tomorrow, uh, I heard a rumor that uh, the new Finnish bakery, tu Tuomo's, uh, is opening up uh, tomorrow morning. So uh, being on holidays and everything, I'm going to go see if I can find us some polar bread for tomorrow night there, Scotty. Fantastic. Great to wash down with a nice bowl of coffee. So he's going to toss it again. There's Hunter Jackson looking for that lane. Oh, a nice stop by Aiden Watch to trip him up. He might have been going down for a first down and then some. But not by a shoestring uh, tackle by Aiden Watch. So a nice job there. You know which name we really haven't heard tonight from the St. Mary's Knights was, uh, you know, uh, Pro Didier. He got a lot of carries last week, and he was getting some hard yards. And uh, Coach Thompson has elected not to give him the ball a lot. He got him blocking a lot this evening, but... Yeah, and he's in the you lineup. Know, he's a big man. fella, and uh, I'd be not hesitant to give him the ball at all. Yep. First and 10 after that gain. Ball is outside. 33, he's got to bounce up. That's Garcia. He's getting wrapped up, and he's getting to take down, getting it taken down to the carpet. Jackson Thornton, I think, drew Albury on the tackle Break for him. In the line. Yeah, yeah Coach, Coach Thompson's got them going. Uh, Evan Bullville. He gets swarmed in east west here, and uh, they got to get going some north. Uh, definitely got to get going north. This yeah, is, uh, uh, you know, second like and tackle. pretty much 20 here. And yeah. And that's the thing, even when they're doing their passing plays, it's out to the flats and uh, to the screens and stuff. And uh, I'd like to see them start moving north-south, especially down 26 points with uh, less than 11 minutes to go. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of fog rolling in here now. Uh, you know, the hot weather we've had. We had some uh, warm weather pretty much the, during the day today, as much as it was rainy and, uh, you know, not the greatest. Uh, but now the uh, cold air must be hitting the warm air and we're getting a little fog settling in. But should be allow us to get the game in. and. Offside black is the call. As you mentioned, the warm weather. And, uh, we're, we're prepared for bear. We've got our long johns on and the uh, camouflage uh, artillery wear. But I brought the uh, the warm ones tonight, Scotty. <laughs> was, last week I was a little, not going to lie, I was a little chilly there. and uh, yeah. yeah, Over prepared this evening because it's a lot milder. So yeah, hopefully bad. we get uh, this kind of weather minus the rain tomorrow night. Absolutely. Great tilt coming up from the senior division as they throw the ball. Nice job passing it vertically and they complete to Diego Garcia. Pickup of about six, needing about 26. So chipping away a little bit. Jackson. That'll be third down. Jackson Kinden on a stop. And a completion to Diego Garcia. So third and long. Third and long here with two, two down territory, I believe. So now this is where I'd like to see them go vertical. Uh, Hunter Jackson hasn't been able to crank one off for uh, 17, 18 yards, which is what he needs at this point, so maybe uh, mix, it, uh, mix it up and a little trick play as uh, Will Baswell would say, a little shenanigans maybe. 
Nice ball by Hayes. He throws it up and he's. Oh! 26, I think. Is that 26 or, is uh, Alexander or is that he's so sets up fourth and long. Would have been short of the first down, but uh, that would have been about a gain of eight, nine yards. But uh, I don't know if the coverage broke down or, sorry, the uh, bro man with coverage broke it up. But uh, Looks like uh, Coach Bonifero is uh, electing to go for it on fourth down here. He knows he's down and they got to come up with something here. Uh, up against the wall with 925. I think that's a good call. Hope for, hope for something magical. And, uh, and a penalty wouldn't hurt. Uh, yeah, a little pass interference. They're going to throw it up there. There's a nice ball. It's up and he's got a chance at it and he's got it. Oh, wow, what a fantastic catch. Nice catch by Diego, Diego, Garcia. Diego Garcia. Great wow. coverage by 28. Jackson oh, getting it, but uh, <laughs> ball uh, tip, tip drill it. there, and uh, Garcia able Garcia to snare it, bring it in for a big gain for the first down and more to the, the 40. Concentration to wear that, down. and uh, hats off to that young man making that catch. And you know what? Uh, it was a touch underthrown, but it was a lot better ball, and uh, you can see the weather's not impacting uh, them as much as it was. So uh, hats off to uh, Alex. Uh, you know, Alex Hayes to making that uh, throw. So yeah, great ball. Uh, as it's handed off inside, there's Pro Odidia. Yeah, right? He's caught by Aiden so, Watch. That's a loss of two on the play. Another big no stop by Aiden Watch. So a nice, uh, nice job of him making the stop. Uh, well, you know, a lot of credit goes to uh, the defensive coordinator, and I know, uh, you know, they got a lot of veteran leaders, Jay Brunetti over there, who I had the pleasure of coaching with as well. And uh, you know, he was linebacker coach, and him and Jay, they re uh, and Nisbet, they really know the the game, and uh, they've got their kids prepared for this tonight. So, well, there's that screen pass again. It's completed this time. Contalene and on the completion. Gets it Plus out past the 40 to about the 38 yard line, but they'll still be short about eight yards. And uh, you mentioned uh, Coach Bernetti when you're talking coaching, you want to hear the lessons from a guy that's played a lot of reps and a lot of snaps. And, uh, obviously, Bernetti, a great uh, Sioux Steeler, Sioux Storm player back in his day. And, uh, yeah, the old Miami Dolphin jerseys there. I know my uh, younger yeah. brother was involved with uh, that team for a while too. Yeah. So. Muzzy uh, also helping out with that squad. Uh, so a lot of days gone by and a few national championships with the Steelers. So great job with those guys doing the job out there. Pass intended for Ken Contalainen. Falls incomplete. That pass on third down goes fourth, to Contalainen, but uh, incomplete. Another nice ball. So that'll bring up fourth down and eight. And I was uh, a little surprised that they went that far. They only needed eight yards, and they launched it uh, 30 down to Cantalane. And uh, nice ball again thrown by Hayes, just uh, unable to complete. And that's the same play receiver. that we saw last week uh, to Botang, and uh, that's where they're missing him this evening, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. So Hayes, last chance on fourth down. He's completing it. That's going to be the job of the receiver to get out, and that's Garcia past the first down there. Takes a little rough ride Passes out of bounds Bruins. by number two. Garcia, he gets the first down. Jackson Kennedy. Maybe a yard or two more. You know, as soon as the rain stopped here, they're able to start throwing here in the fourth quarter and uh, Jackson Kennedy starting to pay some down. dividends for them. Unfortunately, it's uh, we're teetering on a little bit uh, too late for this, for sure. Yeah, you but know. you know what? They had to get a march here and onside kick. Getting on the board is momentum, right? So yeah, Absolutely. They've got to feed off it, and then hopefully first the defense can feed off it. 29-yard line of the Colts. And the Vegas odds aren't good for the uh, Knights uh, late, seven, in, uh, eight. late uh, in the fourth quarter here, but uh, there's Hunter Jackson. He might scamper loose, and, but wrapped up Pitch nicely. Jackson, 57. Gabe Phillips with another big stop. Number 23 helping out there, Cohen Manchelenko. So there's Manchelenko and back to Reginald form. And uh, Hunter Jackson just Phillips. unable to get uh, uncorked today, but... Uh, Credit to the defensive line for the uh, Colts because they're getting in there and stirring up some uh, mud and, and uh, Knights just unable to get their running game established today. Here's that screen pass again. They love that play. Completed to Giordano. Giordano's loose. He might get ahead for the first down. Giordano, nice might be two, two yards short. To almost completion. Yard line. you got to hate those balls thrown in front yeah, of you when you see the, the, the footsteps of the defender the coming down and breathing down your neck. But uh, nice pick up to about the 21-yard line. They're going to be short, two yards, bringing up third and two. So a nice little march by these St. Mary's Knights. They uh, could put themselves in a, into a scoring position here with 
two yards and a new first down inside the red zone. Alex Hayes back in shotgun. Balls, nice snap. And there's a little bit of a wobbler. He's thrown out to the sidelines. Pass intended for that number 20, number 80. Yeah, you know what? He wasn't set on that throw. He wasn't get, didn't have his feet planted, and that ball got away from him a little bit, I think, Scott. So. Well, that pass intended for Cole Bailey, but uh, uncatchable ball and uh, knocked down by the uh, white uh, jersey of the Colts. And that'll bring up fourth pass and two. For so. either Cole Bailey. Third and two. I think they go up the middle and uh, try to get the sticks on the floor instead of uh, for the Knights. throwing it up in the air. But... Uh, Looks like they're going to go under center, so probably a quarterback sneak here. And now they hand off directly, but it's stopped. Pro Dedier is stopped in the backfield, and there will not be enough for a first down. That means the Colts will take over, and I good think one that's by uh, and Williamson and good enough for the Colts as they'll like try, they try just to just run down the uh, clock and uh, and put an end to this one. And we have a turnover. Uh, you know what? Uh, just uh, the impact of the core defensive line tonight. They've uh, really, uh, you know. It really set the tone for the whole game, and they weren't allowing anything. And right now, they got a big donut up on the board, and uh, you know, hats off to them. They were they were ready for tonight. It was a struggle in the first half, and uh, you know, they they made the plays when they needed to make them, and uh, that's just the way it uh, goes sometimes. So. Number four, Zay Murdoch leading his charges here. He's going to throw it out to the sidelines, and he's got uh, number 11, Grisdale, and he's got a good gain, about uh, 11, 12 yards past the 30 to the 34, looks like, the like they're loving we up for a first down. Yeah, you know what? He's run. quietly had a pretty good game for them as well on offense. Uh, when they've needed a big catch, uh, he's uh, definitely come through for them. So First and 10 Colts. And they'll move the sticks, and uh, Colts happy to let the clock run down. We'll be able to run out the clock, but uh, keep marching and doing their thing and uh, flexing their muscle as they have done all day. I think they've been a better team uh, so far, up 26 with four minutes to go. This continues. They'll win the junior championship, and uh, Dickinson goes right, cuts back. He's got the corner. He's going to make some yards. Out past the 55, Cowboys. pushed out of bounds. Hits the brakes, changes direction. Gets about 15, enough for a yards first down, 20 yard gain. Bounds by Cole At midfield, Cole Rivet with the push out of bounds. So again, we're going to confer with the uh, booth here and Coach Baswa and I will come up with our athletes of the game. Brought to you by Wendy's and Team Essentials. As the clock ticks down, we're inside three minutes, 40. Colts, as I said, happy to run this clock down, gain a few more to, uh, first downs, maybe score one more touchdown to salt this away as number 91 jogs out the field. Reed Taylor, too many men on for the Colts. There's a flag in the back in the secondary as number 34. 34, A.J. Cochmelio will run Cochmelio. all the way down and gains a bit of yards before being backed up with the flag yards, the but, somewhere uh, between the 50 and 55. The flag will change that spot. And while I'm at it, I want to give a big high five to number 57 for the St. Mary's Knights. My buddy Jay Abbott uh, okay. rocking and rolling on the football field, enjoying his uh, season. All the best in your hockey season this year, Jay, and uh, keep up the great work. So their call is going to go against Cora. They had six down linemen on the line of scrimmage, so that'll back them up. Now the clock's uh, ticking down here, Scotty. We've got three minutes to go. And, uh, you know, congratulations to all both teams uh, for you know, a nice, uh, great season for the both of them. But, uh, you know, just somebody had to come out on top tonight, and right now uh, Cora's in the driver's seat. Yeah, exactly. So the uh, Colts will take the snap. Ball's hand off Dickinson. Dickinson tries to get it outside. Cuts it back inside. Met by three or four yeah, St. Mary's Knights, including Wesley Tate. Would have been the original line of scrimmage. So right now, we're going to talk about some of the, uh, some of the honorable mentions, and I'll let you take that away, Coach. 
Well, just as a brief discussion we've had up here, Scotty, we've had uh, we were treated to some uh, great football here. Um, honor mentionable uh, for the two of us up here. Good morning. We have uh, Wesley Tate and uh, Diego Garcia. You know, they had some great games. Some of them had to fill in, uh, uh, you know, and play some positions that they probably weren't normally ready for. But uh, hats off to them for uh, a good game tonight. And then Cora, uh -huh. back to that little crisscross. <laughs> Nicely designed, and you can uh, well, see it on film. You know what's coming, but uh, it's hard to defend. Well, AJ Kotschmino takes it down Pushing inside down near the 30. 39, so, Katie on the tackle you know, for the there's Knights. A, there's a trio of uh, honorable mentions here for Cora. You, we picked a couple of them, and uh, you know the kid that just had the ball, AJ Kotschmino, big leg tonight. He made a couple of great kicks, and uh, you know Grisdale, G G Gavin Grisdale, uh, you know some terrific catches when they needed him and uh, Melchior, I think he had a strong performance tonight uh, and uh, getting uh, honorable mention as well. So Absolutely. Some great performances by great teams and uh, regardless of the outcome here with 229 to go, we've got to congratulate both these programs, both these schools and obviously a great uh, feeder program as they uh, funnel their kids up to the senior ranks. Tomorrow, oh, the ball is thrown and uh, incomplete to number 19. Tristan Cote, but, uh, 19, Tristan Cote. but uh, like I said, the feeder programs uh, means that uh, senior football in the Sioux is going to be uh, alive and well, and uh, a lot of these uh, teams will be returning uh, some of these grade nines into grade 10 positions as leaders uh, next year in the junior ranks, and uh, you can expect them to be perennially uh, in the mix and in the conversation for championship next year. So big show to both coaching staffs and uh, 100%, a great year. Scott, you nailed it. So it looks like we got second and 10 after the incompletion. Zane Murdoch drops and he hands off to, looks like Dickinson again. Dickinson gets stopped in the off to backfield again. there. Number 30, again. Cole Rivet on the stop. He's met by Cole Rivet in a couple of nights. There's uh, Cavalier again, Buffano with the stop, helping out uh, Katie. So, uh, nice game tackling by the uh, well, We're at the two minute mark. I will give the uh, player of the game here for the St. Mary's Knights. and. You know, he got stepped. Up, he had to step up tonight for them, and uh, Cameron Contalene, and I think had a terrific game for the St. Mary's Knights. And you know, they're coming out on the short end, and I know player of the game is no, uh, cons uh, you know, consolation consolation prize, and uh, for them, but uh, Cameron Contalene and St. Mary's uh, player of the game this evening. Well done, Cameron. Congratulations on the honor. Nice stop by the defense of well, the Knights. The He's hit by Heath Desjardins. Heath Desjardins with another big stop. Okay. He's called him, we've called his name quite a few times this uh, this game. And uh, had him some good one too. Leslie so Tate again out. helping out there. Yeah, it looks like uh, Cora is uh, marching out some uh, the punt team here. So, uh, for the Colts. Player of the game uh, for uh, tonight, Scott, uh, you know. He did it on both sides of the ball for the quarter. The Colts tonight made tackles, uh, was a force in the game. He got a lot of really hard yards when they needed them, and uh, I thought he played outstanding tonight. So, uh, player of the game for uh, the Cora Colts, number 23, Cohen Manchelenko. Very good. Congratulations to Cohen as the Colts uh, punt the ball, and looks like they're looking for another point, but uh, it'll be short. Ball hits the deck again, and St. Mary's able to recover it. Michael Maurice on uh, well, for the Colts. Uh, the Braden Lemaire, punt number 80, the out there on the punt cover. And uh, nice job of the Colts to pin the St. Mary's Knights deep. And uh, here we see a few more substitutions. We got number 82 stepping up, Seamus Prophet. Uh, or sorry, 32. Uh, number 6, Chase Venn. Uh, number 90 is out there for the Cora Colts, Wyatt Jagger. Is that not Georgia Freedom, but uh, Robin Price, maybe? Anyway, we got a few uh, players getting their licks out here, getting some rips. Uh, 132, get their jerseys dirty in the championship. Some great memories made here for these young athletes. And Pass there's the Alex Hayes throwing Looks intended like for Garcia. Garcia falls incomplete. Falls incomplete. Looks like it's going to be second and ten. And again, I can imagine the last 128, uh, the moral victory will be to break the goose egg. So the St. Mary's Knights will keep hard charging. And Coach Bonifero trying to put some numbers on the board. Alex Hayes is looking probably to go north-south here and get a little something late. So 
Hayes takes the snap. They swing it out to the hitch, the screen pass again, and that's well defended by 31 at Williamson. Having himself a good game as well. Looks like a little slow yard. to get up as the receiver for the Knights, but uh, up to his. Oh, no, he's going to stay down and get a little assistance. 122 to go. Yeah, you know, and he definitely got rolled up on uh, from behind and, uh, you know, up over the uh, leg and, you know, right on the ankle. And he's trying to get up and fight it off, but uh, sometimes you just need a minute there. Yeah. And the trainers will come off, and I think they blow the whistle, so he'll have to come out for a couple of periods. A or a couple of plays. Giordano, the injured receiver there, number 85. Had himself a good game and a couple of catches early. And like I said, Coach, uh, you know, despite the outcome, 26 0, uh, score of Colts were the favorite uh, going into this game, and uh, with a couple of key absences for the Knights and uh, a little bit of the weather uh, factors, um, you know. Colts just came out and they were a better football team so hats off to them and their program and their coaching staff uh, St. Mary's Knights a valiant effort uh, no shame in that uh, there's always got to be a second place and a runner up in each game and uh, they're uh, playing with style, playing with class, nice to see no uh, no serious injuries you know, and then they're going to finish this one off great and a uh, big shout out to all the coaches players, programs, administrations everybody involved and uh, we're hoping for another great game just like this one tomorrow so yeah, definitely. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow night. Uh, you know, two seasoned well, coaches, uh, seasoned head coaches, uh, Coach you Marco, are. you know, a legend, been coaching for, you know, almost 35 years, I think, uh, in, locally, and Coach Annette, uh, not too far behind. And, you know, two class coaches, and uh, they spent a lot of time well, on, the on, the on the football field and getting the kids ready for this. So uh, hopefully we are entertained tomorrow night uh, even more than tonight. So. And the night's back to throw. Hayes. Tries to complete. Deacon Lesage on the field for the uh, Knights. They've also got uh, Charles McInnes out there. So passing complete. I can't get the receiver, but uh, CBB number 80 on the other side running his routes, getting his licks in there. And uh, you know, 26 nothing. And uh, of course, still got some of their original starters out here. Oh, it is first down, so. Oh, and so their uh, offense will take the field, turnover on downs. I'm hoping. Uh, 43.9 to go. You know, Coach Bernabucci is always classy, so he should be just taking a knee here pretty close here and uh, just nice. having them, uh, you know, run the rest of the clock out. To no need for uh, extra points, so. Now, now, Coach, there's been some speculation. Is there a NASA final for these juniors, and when is it? Next week, uh, next weekend. So. so next weekend, the Coral Colts will travel to Sudbury to take on the Sudbury uh, representative in the NASA. Um, so good luck to the uh, Coral team and uh, safe travels and uh, bring us back a little ship, will you? Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, you know, usually uh, back in the day when I was coaching, uh, I was on the, on, I knew who we were playing and I'd be scouting some of the things and seeing what's going on and who's winning for them. But uh, hats off to Cora tonight. Definitely a uh, class effort and uh, victorious. Uh, you know, good to see uh, some of the guys I coach with. And hats off to them tonight uh, for being prepared and, uh, you know, big win for the uh, Cora Colt team. So. Yeah, so your final 26 for the Cora Colts, the city champions in the junior football loop, beating the St. Mary's Knights in a great game here on SuSports.com. We thank you for joining us. We remind you that tomorrow, 7.30, right here on SuSports.com and True Host Radio, we'll have the senior final between the Cora Colts and the St. Mary's Knights. I'm Scott McPherson, joined up here with Coach Ray Basel. Thank you very much, Coach, for joining us. Uh, let's do it again tomorrow. Have yeah, a great night. Uh, tonight was uh, such hey, a good you know, night. Uh, the Baz and Buzz Show will be back on track tomorrow night, buddy. I haven't been canceled yet. Uh, thanks for joining us on SuSports.com. We'll see you again tomorrow for the Big Tilt on Friday Night Lights.